have anything to do with we're on live anything to do with the vent stuff like do they know something no, that nobody no. else knows right now are we, on live? we are on live heck yeah well don't shut up we're on live wait why is this not playing are we on live or is this is this thing on I can't hear anything. Somebody, uh, can anybody hear us by chance? Anybody hear us? Have n- oh, you on? Medium, medium five says you on. Why isn't our music playing? I wonder. You got the music today, Rip. Big gold. Big gold and a bill fold. So swole that I can't get the shit closed. I, I hit so play. I can you guys hear the music? You might hear music by chance. Got other fish to fry. Wow. What a like the World Series on and oh music played. Wonder why I didn't hear it. All right, I got I got issues somewhere. Somewhere in the uh, the technological system, we got uh, we got some issues here, Rip. We always have issues. So what the hell? Now we got technological issue. Music played. All right, I just can't hear it. Holy shit! I need to test something out before. Let me see. Well, you did you hear it? Huh? Did yeah? Did you hear it? Huh? <laughs> Let me see. Let me see if the video plays here. What would be a good one? What would be a good one to oh, to I test know. out? What would be a good one? (laughs) But you didn't hear it, though. Did you hear it? No sound. Huh. Let me look at the... um, See, Let me see our audio settings here real quick. We'll be with you right real quick here. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. There it is. Let me see. Built in. All right, let's try this one more time and see if we can we can hear it this time or not. Where'd that where'd that go? Oh, here it is. <laughs> if he only knew how to sell, man. When you were a uh, Turbo and Floyd's trainer, if you only taught him how to sell, he would have got signed a long time ago. Oh yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so yeah, Truth just texted me the other night and said something about it. All right, let's check out this chat. Hey, we get look at this, Rip. We already got a we got a Clayton. I got to skip all the way down to the bottom. Look at Clayton. It's my hey, wife Amanda's birthday too. Would be awesome if you gave her a shout out. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday Amanda. Amanda. We love Amanda here. Don't get any than this. Hell no, Amanda. I don't think your mic's on. There. Yeah, okay. Fine. Well, you know. <laughs> I, right. I I forgot to turn my microphone on today. Happy birthday, Amanda! Tell her, Rip. Tell her she's our favorite birthday girl. Uh, you're you're the actually greatest double birthday girl double, today. And then Shelly Martinez. Shelly Martinez today. is today as well. Happy so birthday, we Shelly got, Martinez. Okay, we got Mrs. Mrs. Clayton, um, Amanda. She's happy birthday. I think it's her 29th still. Ama- I mean, and then it's just like Shelly's 29th birthday. Amanda Clayton. Uh, in, in the in the prime of life, baby. It don't right. it don't get any better than this. She and she, you know what though? She did try to get Clayton to get a job, you know? And uh, he was unhirable. That was their quote of the week or comment of the week last week. So Clayton and Amanda are on fire, man. And then somebody told me we should have that comment of the week every week. And I said, that's a great idea. So did you did you bring it today, Rip? Do you have that one together? The comment of the week. You just told it to me right now. So now you did. But, <laughs> you know, you didn't. Well, anyway, happy birthday, Amanda. We give you a hand. We here at the uh, Wrestling with Rip Rogers. Ask Rip Rogers live. Don't get, <laughs> don't get any better than that. Wish you a uh, fabulous happy birthday. And while we were on it, I might as well just, uh, I don't even think I loaded that up yet, did I? Got to get that loaded. Sometime when I get you talking here in a little bit, I'll I'll load up Shelly's picture and let's see what we got here. Happy birthday, Rip! Oh my God, OMG is awesome as usual. Yep, gang will be on here at noon, baby. One man gang join at noon. Rip's birthday, one man gang's birthday Monday. Amanda's birthday, Shelly Martinez's birthday, our two year anniversary. Holy shit, what a day, Rip! This is like the greatest day today. <laughs> It is such a great day. Hey, I got I got my Dave Marquez free jacket on. Yeah, United Wrestling Network, and they got a another station popping up in in Lexington, Kentucky now. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, so the wrestling's going to be on there, and then uh, I'm hoping they come to Indianapolis pretty soon. Holy shit! Look, we we got a 
Looks like we got a surprise here. Holy cow, look at that. Happy she birthday, is. Hustler. Yeah, I'm only 70. Holy Jesus. Renee Dupree Holy in the house. Jesus. You look tan. You got a, you got a, like a filter what? on your, your camera or you been out sunbathing or what? What do you got going on there? Hey, brother, you got to stay ready. That's what the hustler taught me. You got to stay he, ready. He, he's ready, Freddie. All, he, all he did was be, he's on the road getting to do what he yeah, wants I to see. do. Multi-millionaire, wrestling legend, one of the world's youngest champions of all time, WWE. And all he does was, was bitching about his food. His workout wasn't good enough. And then uh, his got, flights, what, his seats. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, it's not. It, it wasn't perfect for 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 baby Renee. <laughs> oh my God! And he was, you know, and he's and he's got to stay in the prime of life and look good and do selfies and and have the tats and and all the right shots. I bet he's happy he came on to wish you a happy birthday. I, 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 I bet he. I bet he is now. Jesus. Holy! Hey, we're gonna go to Mountain Road, and we're gonna get pulled down backwards by the magnetic by the magnetic poles, and it don't get any better than that. That's right. I think you're looking great, man. You got the uh, <laughs> your teeth look white, the face looks tan, the hair looks great. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hustler. How does it feel to be 55? 50. God, I wish I was. Your fine. Facebook says you're like 54 or something like oh, that. It was 53. Somebody yeah. told me that. Yeah. I said and said oh, I said I said well hell I didn't put that shit in there I don't know what somebody anybody can put anything that's like all the stuff I remember it, you, everything it said on me about Wikipedia was wrong yeah but this is your Facebook so you somebody that well, set it up it's not just well, like Facebook makes it up it's I your account it your profile well, I don't I didn't set it I didn't know how would know how to fucking set some bitch up down in or out or whatever the fuck it was now Renee you just turned forty not too long ago right is that right December yeah forty man the big four zero. Rip, are you um, are you trying to get ready to play Santa Claus at the mall for next winter? Well, I got a haircut. I can see that. That's always that's always a plus. It what it kept it kept getting in my mouth all the time, and I'd get something to eat, and I'd be chewing on my own hair and everything. You got tied up in a ponytail there, Rip. Well, no, it was my front, and it would just come down. It would just drop down and be coming mm -hmm. all the way down here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the multi-talented uh, Dylan Bostic cut my hair for me. So God, it, it all of a sudden every girl's ribbing me now. All of a sudden I'm like a a, a sex symbol. You know, they're just <laughs> they're squirting, just throwing themselves at me. I'm looking left, looking right. What's the rib? This and that. Oh, you're just so hot. I said, Oh yeah, I can tell. You know. <laughs> I said, You need some goddamn glasses, bitch. <laughs> well, this is awesome. You guys got a lot more super chats than before. You guys are moving on up in the world. Yeah, we got one. Yeah, we got a we got a birthday. Look at that, man. If you want to give uh, Amanda a little birthday shout out, she'd really appreciate it. Clayton's one of our top stars there in the All chat. All the top so. stars. Well, happy birthday, Clayton's wife, Amanda. Yeah, it yeah. don't get any better than that, does it? Right. And I think I saw a new, a new yeah. YouTube, a new YouTube member. Yeah, we got a new member, Bull Digging. Welcome, Bull welcome, Bull Digging. Shit! Hey, look at this, Big Al Robinson. Big Al's gonna show, and, and he, he's Rip. I just saw he bought two, uh, two t-shirts too. I think Big Al Robinson came through with a couple t-shirts this week. So well, shit, he's on fire. Big Al is. Shout out did to he, Big Al Robinson. Did, did, man. did he say gentleman yet? I uh, yeah, but he did right there. Okay, right there, gentleman. I, I got to oh, adjust my. I got to adjust got my another glasses. member. We got another new member. Look at Renee, man. He's so good at this. He's. No, it's not a new. It's an anniversary. Opinion Haber. Second oh. anniversary, the number one member, Opinion Haber, man. It don't there get you better go. than that. He's been with us for uh, 16 months, it says right there. And from, we went from the Army of Two to the Army of One now. That's right. But he still does the about face, clicks his heel, acts like he's over, you know. And well, he knows guys, he's from California. Fans. Hey, he's from California. He knows everybody, too. <laughs> That's all, right, well, all the fans on here it's hustle rip rogers birthday you gotta send him a donation for his birthday you know one dollar two dollars a hundred come on it's the hustler yeah that's right yeah i like that renee thanks i man. like that I, I would never have, i wouldn't have enough brains to do that yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Right. Thanks for stopping in and saying happy birthday. Really appreciate it. Well, that's it. I just want to wish... Uh, see, Rip has taken the father position now that my own father has passed away. So, by default, he takes that position. So, I got to at least wish him a happy birthday. Well, that's nice of you. We, all, we appreciate all the best, guys. We all right, man. Hey. Don't go dying on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm balloons, only, baby. All right. Yeah, balloons. I'm only 70. It don't get any better than that. How about that? Renee Dupree in the house, Rip. Shit. All the top he's stars a, he, here. He's on fire. 
He is on fire. It doesn't get any better than this. Renee, go check him out. Cafe Day, Renee. Renee Dupree, good show over there he's got. I'm trying to think who he had on the other night. They were, man, I can't even remember now. Somebody. Anyway, let's get back. We got a happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Uncle Rip. Happy birthday. Bunch of people in green, too. Love that. Papa Rip. Okay, we're way behind. There we got Amanda. We heard it. We got it. Stephen Key's in the house. Bobby Lopez in the house. All the top stars. Once again, Bull Digging in the house. New YouTube member. Thank you for that. Really appreciate that. Bobby Lopez says my new look is over. It's over, baby. George Jetson in the house. Big Al Robinson. Bought some t-shirts. Super sticker today. Renee Dupree in the house. Holy cow. We got everything. Favorite podcast, Rip and Renee's. Medium 5 said he's going to send a gift through uh, PayPal later on. So that, that, that's cool. We can do that too. All right. I think I'm caught up. Now I got, uh, I got some stuff to share here. All these uh, awesome members that we have. Look at this. I, I got it caught up. I know I don't do enough for the members. I don't know if you guys can read that or not, but Opinion Haver. It did just pop up. Number one, baby. Him and Michael Costello, 16 months. They're all moving up. Frank's Pickle Barrel ass. BDM5, Popful Maniac, Star K, Greg Smith, Jeff G, Heavy D, Clayton, Brian K, Whitewater, Drew S, Roy Fox, James Orr, KCS, Marv Nickel, Migrating Coconut Rip, John Tucker, Buckshot Kid, Anthony D, Captain Bender. Jason, is it Cax or Tax? He tells us every week. I know. One of those two. Randy Harris, and then you like to say this one. Do you remember how to say that one? Is it Frederick? How did, how did you say that last week? Fred, Freddie Bye. <laughs> Fred, I'm not sure that's how you said it, but well, Freddie Bye. Well, he's doing the, 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 the French gimmick, right? And then last week, our newest member, G3333 Ball. And then we got one more to add today. So, so, we're, so we're on fire. Even though you come up today, I come up today and – I got, and, I, and I'm hearing nothing but wood, wood cut, cutting, and, and and I said, what, what the hell? I said, where's Lilas? Is he dead or what? Or, or I don't know what he was. And all of a sudden, I shoot, he's out like a, he's bartering to get some logs cut or whatever, because he lives, he's got the mansion, Lila Studios, this and that, and all the neighbors are coming in and in the, the rich part of town, put it that way. <laughs> What the hell? I live right? so far out here. That's what we have to do. We have to barter. We can't just go to the store and buy stuff. We have to We have to trade and barter. Hey, go get you a Hustle Rip Rogers t-shirt. It'd be a great birthday present. ProWrestlingTees.com. Rip's book on Amazon.com. Send us some super chats. Renee Dupree just said send Rip some money for his birthday. So, hey, we don't beg often, but for a birthday, what the hell? What the hell? And look at this, Rip. You got a, a birthday wish I saw from Japan. How about that on Twitter? Oh, yeah, Masa. He's he, he's awesome. Look at that, man. That's pretty cool. And then I saw on Facebook where, look at this, look at this picture. Your sister wished you a happy birthday. Well, she felt obligated since she didn't send me no money. So who we got? Who we got in this picture, Rip? Well, that's my little brother, Brett, little brother, Greg, older sister, Jan, and me. I'm about uh, 17 or six, 16 or 17 there. So you got to be the bottom right. Yeah. On a my uh -huh. screen. I don't know what it looks like on theirs, but the bottom one. And then uh, somebody else sent you a, a nice little birthday picture. Look at that, baby. That that's when Vaughn Lilas, this is before he reached full full growth. <laughs> Look at those pants, man. And those yeah, shoes. Yeah, they were, yeah. Julie Lilas down there, the all time leading scorer in Butler history down there as well. Uh-huh. Man, it don't get no better than that. And then today we celebrate the double birthday celebration. Rips was Wednesdays. One Man Gangs is coming up on Monday. He said he's 64 on Monday. So we got a live double birthday bash today. And we're all in the prime of life. Man. All in the prime of life. It don't get any better than and this. And with all this shit going on, I almost forgot to mention, today is also our two-year two anniversary. says next Friday, but next Friday is today. Today. Yeah, that is today. Right. Okay. It's our two-year anniversary. How in the hell did we make it this long, Rip? Well, it's been a struggle, but it you know, been. it's it's been a struggle, <laughs> been a but struggle. I, but yeah. I but I I've carried you tech <laughs> technology wise and work wise, and uh, you know, I'm just I'm just so good. That's I, you know, I can do it. Yeah, 
I got some other uh, pictures to bring up here in a minute. Let's go back to the chat, see if we got any things here. Uh, Corey Thomas, happy birthday. Robbie Martin, Renee is married. Take it easy. I don't know what that means. Tell you, I got a, a hustle shirt via Stephen Keys. Medium five said it'd be number number three, but it's still number four. That's good. All right. Anybody got any uh, questions in the chat? Let us know. If not, shit. Hey, there's a uh, happy anniversary from Puerto Rico, Rip. All right. How about that? Happy anniversary from Puerto Rico. Don't get any better than that. Does not get any better than that. Look at this, Rip. I, I went ahead. We're going to go down memory lane a little bit here. Look at this. I got a picture from the... Uh, the airport when you and Romer saw me in Las Vegas and I had no money, no food. My cards were all blocked. I was starving for about 48 straight hours and well, I thought you needed and neither one of you would buy me anything at the airport. Well, you didn't think I had any money with me, did you? Yeah, probably. Look at that big fanny pack. You know Romer did. Well, it's the same fanny pack here. It's all busting out and everything. Look at that picture, Rip. Holy cow, the old convertible blondes, baby. Yeah, that was at the old uh, W or uh the studio there in Lexington, Channel Thir Good Instead old Instead of channel five 36. photos, you got to speak up, Rip. Come on, we got to hear you today. Instead of five photos, we got one photo. Look, I, no, now I, we got a million photos. There's Brooklyn got, Pizza. A, look at look who's right there in that that shirt. Where where does he get those shirts from? Taiwan. <laughs> Ty look at that, baby. Special order from Taiwan. Yeah, this this one was only seventy five bucks. You know, uh, so I still got. Oh, there. I noticed you weren't in this picture because you were probably out on stage. But there we are behind the, uh, the backstage with Mick Foley. But then uh, you were here. You were up on stage, Rip. You were up on stage with Mick. Yeah, I was probably doing some kind of sexual shenanigans. Yeah. You know, male, female, doll, whatever. It doesn't make it really make any difference. Just, just hanging out, getting over. Do you know who that is? You know, that's you and your sister. No, <laughs> who's the other one? That's Derek, isn't it? Derek. Are yeah. You? Derek, who? Huh? <laughs> that's uh your your sister's husband, but but she's little and he's older. You don't know who that is? No. That's Wee Willie. Wee Willie. Wee Willie, the midget wrestler from way back in the day. That ain't Wee Willie. Well, that's what it says on the back of the picture. Well, that ain't right. That ain't Wee Willie. Then Wee Willie was a dwarf. Well, he is. That is a. Wee Willie was about three foot tall. Well, I'm five years old in that picture. I know. Well, how tall do you think I am at, at the age of four or five? Probably that, about three foot tall. That ain't Wee Willie, is it? That's what the, that's what the picture said on the back of it. I mean, that's what the picture said. Oh. Well, he, I mean, I'm five. My sister's mm -hmm. like, I'm four, maybe. My sister's like seven. Uh huh. I mean, and he's standing up and she's bending over. I mean, he can't be too damn tall. I thought he, he thought it was Derek. <laughs> yeah, Jesus I thought, Christ. I thought he was ribbing me somewhere. Uh, look at that picture. Holy shit. There's the hustler when he was a stripper. That's my aunt. <laughs> yeah. What, I think it was like her 30th birthday or something. Yeah, something like that. Rip came in, brought balloons, and uh -huh. uh, stripped for my aunt. That's how far back me and Rip go. <laughs> Here's a more up-to-date picture, hanging out with newly signed AEW star. And I don't know, is Tanea still with AEW? Do you have any idea? Yeah, I think she's still there. Uh, here we are training Pat McAfee, chasing the dream, baby. Looks like he made it, and we're still here at Lila Studios. <laughs> yeah, I don't get any better than that. Uh, I got the same shirt on with that, <laughs> whatever. At least he has a red chest for my chops. Yeah, nothing that, else. there's out and runner. <laughs> here we are with the wildfire, baby. Tommy Rich. Rip in the suit and tie, looking good. We're looking average, you know, what the fuck, right? Looking average? You were a little bulked up there, wasn't you? All right, well, I mean, it's just big a big arm looking there. Just a few years ago. Uh-huh. Look at that. The uh, OVW legends there. Cornette, <laughs> Danny. See Julie doing the, um, what, are, what are those called? Uh, the uh, photo bomb back there in the back. All the top stars. And I was going to show this to Crusher when he comes on. An old, this is at, at Seymour. The Seymour mm -hmm. National Guard Armory. ICW Wrestling. Crusher was the uh, opening match. Seven foot, 500 pound Crusher Broomfield made it to Seymour, Indiana. And I actually have a picture from that same night. Look at that. Was Chili's that in the picture. Me, you, Chili, and my cousin Jacob. That's from that night. Well, Chili wasn't six foot 10 then, was he? No, he wasn't. Or he six was not 12. six foot 10. He wasn't heavy either. How about that, man? I think you was eating all the food then. Oh, shit. 
wasn't big then. Look how skinny I am there. Skinny as a freaking rail. I know, but you as skinny as a rail. <laughs> I know, know, but you said I was eating all the food then. I didn't. Well, you do it. Yeah, you eat all the food and Chili wouldn't get any. Hmm. Then he got it later. <laughs> Greg Smith in the house. Well, he's late today. What? Where's he been? Oh, he's here. Okay, that's all that matters. George Jessen said, uh, how are you going to celebrate, or how did you celebrate, whichever way you want to. How would you celebrate your birthday, Rip? You got... Uh, I didn't. No? No. It okay. was just It was just Wednesday. Oh, Jesus. I, I went to the gym twice, did whatever. <laughs> Boy, it's a, it's a bitch when you're like an adult. Because yeah. it's great when you're a kid and you get all this money and stuff yeah. from everybody. Now you just get... Now you just get, oh, yeah, my brother, uh, he texts me. Oh, my, my sister called me. He said, oh, yeah, okay. That was it. Did you want him to give you money? Did oh, you, hell yeah. Did you think they were going to give you money? Well, I was hoping. <laughs> hmm. All right. Try to get this lighting a little better in here today. Seems bright. Uh, let's see. Where else we got here? Probably been asked before. How did you get the nickname Hustler? Now, this is Bull Digging. He's a new member here today, Rip. So We just talked about that last week, right? Oh, no. God, no. We haven't talked about that for about a year, probably. Oh, no, How you I, got the name, the Hustler? No, I, no, I did a, a podcast of Wolfie D, and I did some other podcast yesterday, too. Uh, oh, anyway. No. Uh, I was wrestling out in Portland, Oregon for, for Don Owen. And I was partners with Playboy Buddy Rose, and uh, Colonel De Beers was out there. Ed Wiskowski, Roddy Piper, Rick Martell, the Bushwhackers, Ron Starr, Adrian Adonis, Iceman Keith Parsons, Johnny Mantell, all the top stars. And every Saturday you'd wrestle at the uh, Portland Sports Arena. And on Sunday, Sandy Barr, the referee, who was Art Barr's dad, who was Sandy Barr who was uh, Jesse Barr's dad. He was the referee there, and he ran a flea market there every Sunday afternoon. So people bring stuff, and uh, uh, me and Buddy Rose was sitting there, and there was a bunch of uh, uh, mail magazines. <laughs> and Buddy says, look, uh, he gave me – he held a magazine. He had the Playboy magazine. He says, I'm the Playboy, I'm the Playboy. And he picked up a Hustler magazine and give it to me. And he said, Now you're the Hustler. So it's the Playboy and the Hustler. Wow, don't get any better than that, man. Yeah. So that buddy Rose, he was a hell of a guy. He was he was he was mischievous. He was the first guy I'd seen that lived with two girls. It was awesome. Oh, really? Like Jack Tripper. Yeah, uh, exactly. And then uh, but he had the three dogs, Pepper, Pretzel, and Pebbles. And they took care of his dog. And, but, and Buddy, had he was the first wrestler. I, you walked in where he lived, and he had the huge, like a, uh, a movie theater screen. And he had the big old captain's chair. And he had uh, all of his matches he's ever had on big, thick tapes. And, and, and once I'd seen that, I went back and got the $7.99, uh, uh, whatever they all called it where you'd tape your stuff off TV and get the, uh, the tapes that cost about a buck and you'd put them on the VHS stuff. Yeah. So I get the VHS stuff, but I never would have got that unless I seen buddy Rose and he'd sit there. Well, here's me wrestling with Piper. Here's this hair match. Here's this and that. And I said, Oh my God. And he just buddy this. He just study that all the time and show you how this led to this, this led to that. You'd learn more about finishes and booking, et cetera. And every, whenever we go out, buddy Rose, always bought for everybody is always like me and butch and luke and buddy in the car and uh of course they be uh, the bushwhackers be on the bob hope the dope always after the matches though and in the playboy we'd always go to wendy's and buddy said i'm buying and buddy would always buy so buddy was a hell of a guy that is awesome uh, Lynn D. C. Lynn D. Leb D. Sorry about that. Said, so "Where's the Keem? Well, Keem's going to be here at noon, 12, 12 p.m. Eastern. It's promoted twelve p.m. Eastern. I can't even talk." Um, somebody said, "Rip, do you remember what happened to an en enhancement talent named Lee Scott? Eighty-nine to ninety period. Took some crazy bumps. Do you know Lee Scott, Rip? I remember the name, and he was always. I think he was at TBS a lot of time. I think he was from." uh north or south carolina and would come with a lot of guys would come from uh that worked for charlotte all the time 
Don't know anything about him now. I can't. Rem I can't remember. I, I remember the name, the time period, but uh, that's about it. There, I got this ready now. So, happy birthday to Shelly Martinez, good friend of the show. She was on last week. If you missed it, go check out our live section. Shelly Martinez and Kevin Thorne were both on here last week. Go check that out. They were a lot of fun. So I'd rather look at a picture of Shelly Martinez than seven. Well, we are. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, a rather uh, uh, that's showing your attributes right there. Isn't that's it? right. So happy birthday to Shelly. Thanks for coming on the show. She's been on a couple times. Uh, been a great guest. So that's happy birthday to Shelly Martinez. And if I could just go <laughs> like that, what the hell, right? Could be your birthday gift. It maybe. could be a birthday gift. Yes. Buckshot kid in the house. BSK. What's up, man? <sighs> Stephen Keys. One man gang is one of Italian's favorites of all time. Well, that's good. Somebody just mentioned Billy Jack Haynes. Somebody told me today he just got. This could be. I mean, this is all alleged. I think somebody told me that he was arrested for murder. Did you hear that uh, today? I seen something where he had got arrested. And then, but on my phone, you had to push another button. Then you had to click something else and you had to either join something or whatever. So I didn't even, so I never did know what it was. I always said, you know, Billy was, uh, Billy was out there. Yeah. And then I was always scared to death of him. Uh, he was, he was a real tough guy. He'd fight you for no reason. Uh, but I hope, he, I hope he's okay. That that's crusher. That's, that's old crusher Broomfield right there. One man gang. He looks a little bit different. I think he's been on a, uh, a little crash diet. He looks a bit, a li little bit like Gene, you, I mean, Eugene, but, uh, y y you never know. Yeah. That's not the crusher. That's Eugene. Nick Dinsmore. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Happy birthday, Ripper. Hey, I'm only 70. I know. Prime of life, baby. Been wanting to die for the last 30 years. He's still around, man. <sighs> Crazy. Don't get any better than that. Eugene in the house. What's up today, man? Man, just sitting here. Going to go down to the beach. Here in the uh, Florida beach condo. Just hanging and banging. You hanging out with Hogan down there? Well, I don't know. We touched base earlier. We, we might hang out later. But don't know. Let's we'll see what happens. Get a, get a sniff in. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Now, do you take like tanning lotion down there and get all oiled up? And oh, absolutely, you know it. A to the Z, head to head to toe, baby. <laughs> Man, what's it like being Eugene and just living the dream out on the beach every day? Is that is that pretty cool? Man, it's it's a dream come true. LTD, living the dream. <laughs> uh, that is awesome. Did you did you think you'd see uh, Rip live to be seventy years old, man? Yeah, absolutely. Rip, yeah. Rip doesn't have too many uh, unhealthy vices. That's a good point. No, uh, I was, I was, what I thought before I got hit and running left for dead, et cetera, <laughs> what I thought, I said, oh, when I'm 70, but or when I'm 80, I'm going to be looking 40 years younger. I was just going to train so fucking much and, and eat right. But then a, a lot of stuff don't come, even though you like it or you want to do this, uh, it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> what kind of workout routine you got going now, Eugene? You've been, you been hitting the gym? I've been to a couple of gyms down here, but the ones I mentioned, man, there's so many people down here. It's so full. I got my rubber bands and I got the, uh, the little thing that you shut in the door so you can do your, your, your lats and your push-ups, a little, basically just a piece of cloth. <sighs> Got a few little small dumbbells, and then I got my bicycle. I like to ride a bicycle a lot. Nice. You got any, you got any big shows coming up? Um, I got that one. Let's see, February twenty fourth, Escanaba, Michigan, UPW, the big anniversary show. It's all coming to a head. <laughs> Chickens are coming home to roost. Oh, now, will all the top stars be there? All of them. You know it, <laughs> hey, baby. It's it's like the the uh, the Eugene taking care of business tour. All right. <laughs> Your last time to see Eugene. <laughs> last time until the next time. Well, I've, I've been on retirement tour for a couple of years now, but Handsome yeah. Timmy was on retirement tour for fifteen years. So yeah. he still is, isn't he? Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, it's never. I tried to get a handsome Jimmy on the show. He he said I have to I have to go uh, to oh, Vaughn. I gotta gotta eat, man. I gotta eat, Vaughn. This is how I eat. Uh, I was willing to 
throw him some money, but I have to like go to where's he in Virginia, West Virginia, somewhere. He doesn't do the internet, doesn't do computers, internet, all that kind of stuff. You got to go to him and take a tour of his school and, and that kind of yeah, stuff. We'll, so. we'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Bo- Boogie's Wrestling Academy there in, in Virginia, North Carolina. Where is- I think it's Virginia. <laughs> Virginia. Boogie came down to uh, Seymour, Indiana once. Got to hang out with him at the Oktoberfest all day, man. Yeah, it, was, be, it was Vaughn this and Vaughn ah, that. It was so awesome. My mom bought his book and his autograph picture <laughs> and his wife's book and Angel. Any, anything else he was selling, my Angel. mom bought all of it. Oh, yeah. To Vaughn's mom, best wishes. Handsome. You're the greatest. Yeah, all that stuff. Oh, he was. Boogie loves you. Oh, yeah. I could just I could just, just see the king shaking his head. <laughs> so I, I just saw Boogie in December when I was coming through Memphis, right? And uh, I'd stayed at my sister's house like the, the night before, or day, two days before. And I, I, she texted me, she messaged me uh, after I left that she had just tested positive for COVID on a, on a home test. And I just kind of forgot about it and filed it back until I filmed that little bit. Eugene walks up to Handsome Jimmy at the merchandise table and getting the picture. And then Handsome Jimmy kisses me on the mouth. And the first thing that goes through my mind is, I bet I've got COVID. I'm going to get Handsome Jimmy and he's going to die because I gave him COVID. Holy shit. But luckily, luckily my, my sister's positive was a false positive so she didn't have COVID at all and there was no scare at all but that was going through my mind right there in, in, in Memphis Tennessee when handsome Jimmy gives Eugene a big kiss on the mouth and I'm going oh my god what have I done did he did he slip you any tongue Jackson d- d- just, just enough just just too- little- you almost killed the handsome Jimmy huh I thought I did for a second there I thought oh my god the, the, the rest of the world's never, never gonna be able to let me live this down I thought he gonna hit you. He give you the kiss and he and he get you with the hepatitis, baby. <laughs> you can't get it from kissing. I don't think. Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't maybe, know. Maybe it was the, the reverse rib that I'm gonna find out about later. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. That's probably it. Hey, well, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for. Uh, hey, we won't keep you. We know you got to get down to Hogan's Beat Shop and. Hang out. Hang and bang. You probably got karaoke tonight, right down there. And that's on Monday nights. Oh, Monday nights. Okay. Monday nights, karaoke night. Looking yeah. good. Remember all the women out there, six to sixty blind, crippled, the crazy. Talk to Nick. Talk to Eugene. He'd be taking care of all your serious business. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna jump off here. Take care, guys. Bye bye. All right. See you, man. Thanks. Peace. Later. Thanks, Nixon. Wow, look at that, man. All the top stars coming on to wish you happy oh, birthday just, today. Oh, I, can't, I can't blame them. You know, I'd want to get a picture of me with this with this haircut before, uh, before I croak. <laughs> well, if you, I mean, yeah. I yeah. So. <laughs> could croak at any time, you know. What the fuck, right? You could. So hopefully it's not here. That'd be good. But then you could have it on tape. It'd be oh, awesome. I don't, yeah, I don't. And you could stream stuff and we have a memorial, you could have a memorial service and like a pay-per-view and stuff like that. Be on fire. And, there, and everybody could talk about what a nice guy I was. And, and the King could be shaking his head and telling stories, this and that. Nine bell salute. Yeah. The nine bell salute. Uh-huh. Hey, don't, I don't want to get into the whole Vince thing too much today at all, but I do want to just throw this up there real quick. Did you see any of the John Laurinaitis lawyer claims? Did you see any of that? Uh, I think I skimmed it, John. But uh, but but whatever. Okay. His lawyer says, like the plaintiff, Mister Laurinaitis is a victim in the case, not a predator. The truth will come out. Whoa. Then he says, count how many times in the complaint Vince exerts control over both of them. Referring to Laurinaitis and and the females. Well, so, if you work for somebody, you got to do what the boss wants. So it looks like Johnny Ace is getting ready to throw Vince under the bus and saying that Vince made him do all of this. Even the times when they met at a hotel, just the two of them, Vince forced him to apparently do that, even though Vince wasn't even there. Well, find, I, I find that interesting. Well. Well, you know that's the lawyer talking, and not Johnny Ace, because Johnny Ace, he don't want to. He wants to hang with. He hope Vince gets out of everything, and he stays on the payroll forever. He ain't stupid. Well, I think they're both off, the, or he's off the payroll now, isn't he? Yeah, but Vince would probably just give him a million just to play with. Anyway. I think what if he hell? turns on Vince, I don't, and I don't think Vince is gonna keep giving him money if Johnny Ace turns on him in court. Well, every girl that 
did Vince and Vince paid him how many millions and millions of dollars. Damn. I should have been, a, I should have been born a girl. I'd have been, I'd have been like What's this. Girl? I'd, be, I, I'd be like the girl here. That, hell she stalked Vince McMahon. Are you kidding me? I know, but I'm talking about Johnny Ace right now. Like I'm talking Well, he's about just doing what the, what his lawyer says to do. He ain't a lawyer. The lawyer's got to do it. The lawyer's trying to get him to get his ass off. I, I understand that. But that's like turning on, like if you're the, the middle drug guy turn yep. on your, your main big boss drug guy. Those guys usually get killed. They yeah, don't, they don't right. get like a million dollars sent to him. Said, Hey, we're still buddies. Like that's, that's oh. a pretty big deal. If he sends Vince to prison, uh -huh. I don't think Vince is just going to be like, Oh, here's a million well, bucks. No matter what. We'll hang out when I get out well, he when I'm 120. <laughs> he ain't sending Vince to prison. Vince is sending himself to prison. Well, if he, I mean, well, well he's the one that robbed the bank, you know, <laughs> with nobody else. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, see, I didn't know if 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 they had uh, uh, the sins of shitting on people. I don't know if that's a a, a, a mortal sin or what or whatever the hell that is in uh, uh, like going to heaven and hell and shit. You know, all of a sudden, what happened? Well, he he shit on a girl. Oh, okay. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Well, I think there's probably more to it than that. But. Talk to the people, Rip. I'm trying to help crush her out with some technology here. Well, that'll be good. He's like he's like me. Yeah. Uh, TCB, Crusher Broomfield, George Gray, uh, OMG, One Man Gang, Panama Gang, been all over the world. Major superstar started with us. Uh, it started with an empty seat. Chief Jagle coming down to TV with Gary Royal, Ricky Starr, all the top stars, and all of a sudden there was a spot for Crusher. Randy Savage saw Crusher Broomfield. And he says, "Oh my God, look at that. He's big." Let's see what he can do. And then he could work. So all of a sudden, oh, crush your broom field. I'm gonna go go home, see mom, get all these stuff. Come on back and gonna work in the territory. Then Ernie Lad's gonna come in and discover Crush Your Broomfield. Gonna go to Mid South and uh, all of a sudden uh George Gray, Crusher Broomfield, Panama gang, all of a sudden he's a major superstar. Major superstar. Uh, still nice, nice as the guys could be very humble, very great talent. And I, you hardly ever see him raise his voice about anything. The great George gray. Don't get any better than that. Does no, it? No, it doesn't, man. No. Anybody got any questions in the chat? We need some questions, man. We need uh, something to talk about. This is ask Rip Rogers live. What do you got uh, questions for one man gang when he gets on? I mean, uh, if he gets busy in the chat, I mean, we'll take people in green. You'll, you'll get one. Of course, any super chats are welcome today. I mean, we got a double birthday party. We don't beg for money often, but uh, we got a double birthday party today with Rip and One Man Gang. So we'd appreciate any anything we could get today. Um, God, it just reminds me. I saw, I saw, I saw yeah. Bowling's a day fed. Like, oh my ten God, families the other night. Or I can't remember what it was. It was something. <laughs> Something funny, but anyway, questions in the chat. Come on, man. Yeah, send money and we'll fit. We'll feed some families too. The <laughs> the Vaughn, the the the, the Lilas family and the Rogers family. Popcorn <laughs> classic in the house. What does Rip think about Art Bar? Uh, he was Beetlejuice. I knew him when he was a little kid, uh, but uh, he was a second generation wrestler, so you know he understood the the business. And he was a smaller guy, so when he became uh, Beetlejuice, it was a hell of a character for him. I think he got that down in he got it down there in Mexico, so he could do all that lucha stuff and everything. And uh, his brother, uh, his older brother Jesse, he was more of a, an amateur wrestler, uh, uh, like a, nor a normal character. And then uh, then Art came along. He was a little bit out there, but what the hell? He got over with it and. Uh, uh, Sandy Bar and Jesse Bar and Art Bar, the 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 fam the famous bars. And I said, "Well, where's Candy?" And I said, "Huh? Oh, never mind. Candy Bar, you know." <laughs> I got it. I'm I'm not ignoring everybody. I'm just trying to help. We did a actually did a walkthrough me and um, Crusher the other day, but now he's switching up his. He was just going to use his phone. Now he's trying to switch up to using a computer. So trying to help him out in the, in the process right here. So. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not Mr. Technology, and I know the crush ain't Mr. Technology either. So uh, uh, should be a, it should be a quite adventure. Lilas is going to have to pull out all the stops to to pull this one today. 
Mr. Uh, Tupac Chamberlain in the house. He wants to hear a uh, Jim Barnett impersonation. Rip. Well, Ripley, my boy. Ripley. And he'd look left, look right, to see if any other stooges are around. He'd go, Ripley, any dirt? <laughs> Oh, he was like, a, he was just like a bitch. He was awesome. <laughs> so I, I'd reach down and act like I'm going to grab his worm. he go, oh, Ripley. Kayfabe. <laughs> Mr. Barnett. Frank's pickle barrel ass is in green. He said that uh, he's getting, seems like you're uh, getting stuff done. Maybe it's medium five. One of you two. Getting CT scan for vi uh, sinus surgery. I will re-listen after. Have a great weekend, Ripper and Chopper and homies. Good luck with the, uh, the surgery there, Frank. Is, is that is that PB pickle barrel? It is, yeah. Holy shit! Nothing like a, a nose surgery. Jesus Christ, that shit hurts. Renee Ramirez, that might be a new listener. I'm not sure. Did Rip watch? He might be a new listener asking this question. Did Rip watch that amazing WWE press conference in Las Vegas? I think that was last night. Um, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> no, I did not. I didn't either, but I saw, I mean, it was all over Twitter. It looked like, kind of looked like The Rock and Roman Reigns are together, it looked like. And I don't know what they're going to do. But they. But then Cody said he wants to wrestle um, Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. This It's what we were going to talk about last week, and then we never, ever got to it. I had a bunch of stuff for the Royal Rumble all ready to go last week. Never got to it, so. Well, the, the people running it, they ain't stupid. Yeah. And it's not going to be cut and dry. Dry. It's going to be controversy. And you're thinking, oh, I want this and I want that for this WrestleMania. And then, but they're how many weeks out from it? So they're going to turn a lot of people. They'll get mad. They'll get happy. They'll get happy. They'll get mad. And when and when it's match time, every will everybody will be at a fever pitch. The tickets will all be sold. And, uh, and they'll be approaching uh, a record number of buys because they've basically fucked with the people and don't give them what they want or they're going to get what you think they don't want or whatever. And doesn't matter. Everybody's going to be mad. Everybody's not going to like it or some are, will love it. And no matter what, there will be a lot. Of, everybody will make a lot of money. So what the hell? Yeah. At the end of the day, it's WrestleMania. Right. I think they've already... I think it's already sold out, right? Like, I don't think it matters what happens. It's one of those. Now, you're looking at, at pay-per-view buys. Well, I don't even think that's the thing. They don't really do that anymore because it's all on Peacock. Oh, it's already on Peacock. I guess you could get, you know, somebody, a new subscriber uh -huh. or whatever. But they, I don't think they really have pay-per-view buys anymore either. So it's will, you know, I guess new people come to Peacock maybe. Uh -huh. I'm not sure how it all. Whatever it is, they're doing quite well, and they got, without hardly any, running any arena events, they got record profits. So whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. Agree. All right, getting this email set up here. Uh, he says it's official. I don't know that just because they say it's official, like, Rip, you know, there's a long, long time still. I think things could change. Thoughts on Great Kabuki Rip? Such a unique gimmick. Okay, Still now imitated. Get any... Well, I'm going to tell you two things. All right. Number one, there was there was two great Kabukis. Number one, the great Kabuki was Ray Urbano, and he he was like Mexican, because and he used to and he came in and worked for ICW, because he was uh, one of Randy Savage's father, Angelo Papa, one of his buddies from years ago. So we had we had the great Kabuki working in ICW, and he was about fifty eight then. And he'd put all the uh, uh, put all the makeup on and everything. And then the second great Kabuki was Kendo Nagasaki. Uh, well, the original Kendo Nagasaki was an English guy, and this was uh, I was with Kendo Nagasaki or the great Kabuki. I was with him in a couple territories. And I made a couple trips with him in his in his uh, black Trans Am, and he and he was a speeder, and uh, he was a good worker. And it, it was funny because he would he would have a like a a hairpiece on because he had a he actually shaved the bald spot up the top of his head, uh, and then he would but then he would when the match so and he'd put have the uh, the full head of hair. Oh, really? with, with the, yeah, I just I just laugh. I never see anything like that. 
So do you think people knew there were great or two great Kabuki? Oh, hell no. Was that wasn't? No, no, this was, uh, -uh, we're looking at, at 40 years ago, you know? So, uh, when he, when he was with us, so the other, the other, uh, the second great Kabuki, the one hit the guys asking about, uh, he wasn't in, a, he probably wasn't in the wrestling business yet or, or whatever. So did he like steal it? Did he know there was another one? Did they know each other? Do you I know how that came Don't, about? don't have a clue. Probably just, uh, when somebody gives a lot of names out like Rip Rogers, yeah. uh, that was Eddie Graham in Texas in 1955. So that's how I got that name. So, and in the original Kendo Nagasaki was, uh, was the English guy. Oh, right. he, he was, his name was Peter Thornleaf and, 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 uh, I was at some shows with him in England and he had the gimmick finger that was, uh, that was cut off. So when he hit, he hit, but it, it was like gimmick finger and everything. So that was a, real, and he was, he was a ginger. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you, you never, you, you're going to get all these tidbits when you're listening to a bunch of old guys. Hell yeah. talk. George Jefferson said, Crusher is calling it on the fly. He sure is, man. We've really taken a, uh, a turn. All our pre, Pre-planned bullshit. Yeah. We're not doing anything. We don't have no pre-planned bullshit here. He got on real easy the other day. Just right in, right on. Just no problems. He's like, oh, this is easy. All right. Called it on the flights. All right. We'll see. We'll get him on here. We're, we're still, um, you know, we're still 15 minutes away from when he's supposed to be on. So we're, we're good. I think he's going to make it. Make it early. Uh, let's see. What else do we got in, in here? Um, Oh, somebody want to know if you ever wrestled Exotic Adrian Street. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we've got many matches of Rip wrestling Exotic Adrian Street on our channel. One of them just went over 7,000 views the other day. So, I mean, Rip can talk about it a little bit if he wants. It's something he's talked about a ton. And we've got a lot of Adrian Street footage on our channel. Just go search it under the match section and, you, and you'll find it. Yeah. Uh, George Jetson, Rip, what's though your pick in the Super Bowl, Rip? Big Super Bowl Sunday coming up. You got the uh, 49ers or Chiefs. You want to break that down, that, that game down for us today? Don't want to break it down. I'll be for the Chiefs. Will you? I would always be for the Chiefs. Well, they've been on fire getting to the final game anyway. Uh, I love I love the Chiefs quarterback. I hate the Chiefs quarterback's brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like a bitch. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I always like the old AFL teams, the Kansas City Chiefs that were in uh, – the early Super Bowls against the Green Bay Packers and everything. And uh, the AFL was like the ABA, whereas they had the best players and the uh, coolest looking. They would do the trick plays and they would have the guys that you didn't really hear of. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden, 10 years down the line, and they were the guys that dominated the league because uh, it's like the NFL, the NBA, they were the guys that they were the bricklayers. They were the ones that, that, that played the game, but the ABA come out. And then all of a sudden they started the, uh, uh, the block shot category, which wasn't around years ago. They had the three pointer and, uh, and they had a lot of good, good guys that had gotten trouble <laughs> and stuff and became ABA, uh, legends. I like the ABA and I like the AFL. So I'm always pretty much going to be for the AFL team against the NFL team in the Super Bowls. Got it. Uh oh, we got we got uh, somebody that's else a, here to see you today. That's Rip. fucking Yoala. <laughs> Yoala, happy birthday, Ripper! I just uh, I'm on the road doing some can of business, but I wanted to jump in here at Lila Studios. Wish you a happy birthday and tell you how much I'm liking the beard. I think you could join the insurgency here in the next year if you keep at it. Well, it don't, it don't get any better than that. You know, I, I see you put a little extra gray in your beard to to give you. To make it look more mature, so that you're more of a hated heel, I understand all that, and I'm sort of like you, where I I cut my hair off on top, and you actually, uh, yeah, uh, sort of shaved it a little bit to give it the illusion that you're an evil heel and you're and you're balding, but you're really not, and that's all self-inflicted just for the gimmick. It's all for the gimmick. I'm actually a, a younger, more attractive, handsome man, but uh, I have to do this to to keep earning the paycheck, man. But uh, well, you got so many wives, you know. That's a lot of, you know, and yeah. and you got to service them all too, you know. And you only got so many fingers, so many toes, so many tongues, etc. But you're the man that can do it. I haven't heard any complaints, you know. No, blue pills, yellow pills, whatever <laughs> it is to to keep things going, man. I gotta stay on the tour, but. Uh, 
Yeah, I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday, and you guys are kicking ass over at Lila Studios. I love seeing Dinsmore join the fold there, and Vaughn's kicking ass, man. But uh, and uh, you know, I'm no one man gang, but uh, I can run in for a minute and say hey, and appreciate you for all that you've done for all of us to, you know, be a tough mentor because otherwise we wouldn't have survived in this fucked up business that <laughs> we're seeing all the crazy shit happen right now, man. Without uh, your tutelage, so I just want to appreciate you on your birthday, hustler. Well, that's good. What's so funny is like, I'm like your dad lecturing you. And then 20 years later, you're going, well, that son of a bitch was fucking right. <laughs> Cause I've made every mistake there goddamn was mm -hmm. just trying to give you the secret to success, you know? So well, it, I got, I got the secret to being blackballed, but I still found my way to do some shit. Uh, and then this weekend, uh, I'm on the road for the Mortal Championship Wrestling in a Guantanamo Bay boot camp match, hardcore against the Nachi Mafia. So I'll be getting all my shit in this weekend. Oh, ah, that's great. It just get... think one more year, he said. You can be a in the insurgency if you let that beard grow. Just one more year, Rip. You can one be more. in that group, man. That, that's something. Well, like at least that. I could be a spiritual figurehead or something like that. Like if I croak and then... You could have a, a yo all off. They could sacrifice you. Yeah, they could. Yeah, they could do that. If we're going to do it, let's do it. Do it for some business. At least get a house out of it. Yeah, a, a classic Muslim burial at sea, just like Osama bin Laden, just like you want. Oh, Jesus Christ, that, <laughs> that ain't bad. What the hell, right? Right, <laughs> exactly. You gonna um, send me? You gonna send me some of that cannabis or anything? You know, you want some gimmicks? You want well, some? I, 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 I've never, I've never had any, but what the fuck, right? Yeah, I mean, there's. It's not where you gotta take a puff anymore, man. They got everything from breath sprays to gummies to chocolate to all kinds of stuff. So you know, it, I think you'll sleep better. You know, anything that's hurting you, joint pain wise, uh, from from getting uh, up there, you're gonna feel some uh, uh, relief from that. So once we get up and running, hopefully here in the next week, I'll definitely uh, get you the hookup, hustler. But uh, you guys follow at Raven's joint. That's going to be the new cannabis dispensary in uh, clay, New York. So just busting my ass to get that open. The next chapter of uh Hamid media. Nice, man. That's awesome. Me and Rip are going to do this show high every Friday. It's oh. going to be great, man. High good. or low, whatever. <laughs> what the hell, right? No matter, right. no matter what, we'll throw in our two cents into to yo Allah. That's right. Absolutely. You know, well, you guys are kicking ass. I'm proud of you. And thanks for letting me be a part of the birthday celebration. Uh, and uh, make sure you guys uh, smash that subscribe button so you're getting all the Von Lilas updates. Shit. Hell yeah, man. Thanks, dude. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Don't get any better ben than Hameen, that. Ben Hameen, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Hameen Media Group. Go <laughs> check them out. They're all over the place. <laughs> that was awesome, man. And holy shit, with they the just, perfect they just... timing, too. Look at this, Rip. We got perfect timing. He he got out of here. There's and we, CB. And we got the gang That's in There's here. Crusher Broomfield. There's yeah, OMG. Yeah. There's George Gray. There's Panama Gang. He don't have enough names. Oh, uh, yeah, right. I couldn't get the uh, computer thing to work right, so I'm just on my telephone. Oh, you couldn't get it, huh? No, nah, I wouldn't. I don't know. It said it wouldn't access the microphone and whatever, so I'll just be, uh, you know, moving around my phone like that. So. All right. You just gotta, You just got to talk loud for us, all right? All right. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Yeah, we just All right, okay. got that big paw in front of the camera, though. So I know. I, I, <laughs> I'm not used to this technology, man. <laughs> I thought you were Mr. Technology. Yeah, right. Okay. That's another name. Yeah, Mr. Technology. We've been plugging you this whole whole first hour about being Mr. Technology. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. You better take all that back and apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, so welcome anyway, to the show. Hey, we're on live, man. So you live right? You on right now? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. You're we're... on live right now in front of thousands and thousands of people. Have you ever done one of these live before? Uh, I've done a couple of them. Oh, yeah? Okay, well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, there I am. I'm going <laughs> to put my headphones on real quick. You're, you're making me dizzy. Uh, well, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> Got to get the glare off my glasses. <laughs> Uh, this is just like uh, having Rip on the show. This yeah, is awesome. This is awesome. This is the <laughs> greatest it. ever. So, uh, Rip, uh, I just want to tell you congratulations on uh, 70 years on planet Earth. Yeah. this was, That was the, the greatest 70th birthday I ever had. Really? What'd you do? Nothing. <laughs> Went to the gym twice and just ate. <laughs> 
took shit, you know. So you, you're my, 70 years old and you're still going to the gym two times a day. Yeah, I did. And then, wow. uh, then give myself a wank about three times, you know, <laughs> thought about that's whoever I wanted to, you know. That's the secret of uh, longevity right there, folks. Just uh, take that, take notes and do that. Yeah, just just give your, give yourself a blank. Think about whoever you want to, and mm. then, and then I was I was waiting for the explosion and give it the little eek out. You know, <laughs> it well, used to go, it used to hit you in the eye. And now you're trying to let it hit you in the if, thumb. If, you know, if there's, any, if there's any young children watching right now, you <laughs> may want to, you know, it's oh, supposed to Rip Rogers, so you might want to, you know. Put well, they're, they're or something. I, we're, we're teaching life lessons right now. <laughs> There's no young children. Nobody watches what? this show. Don't worry about it. No, I, well, I don't know about that now. Somebody's got to watch it or you wouldn't waste time doing it. Yeah, oh, sure we would. About, man? Yeah, y'all got probably the what? The top fifth, uh, top five uh, wrestling program in the world. Oh, probably. We in the top two, probably. I'm going to clip that yeah. up and put top that out. Two. Yeah, top can you three. say that? Yeah, can, you, can you can yeah, you say that again? Say it so again. This is, the, so... this is the top five wrestling program in the world. That's because, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could have uh-huh. said, you know, I didn't want to push it and say number one, but uh, – yeah. You know, These so people know you're lying. Five, so I figured that was a good medium number. There you go. Are you gonna put? Uh, uh, what, what what is it with the beard? Where'd that come about from? You uh, just wake up one morning and said, "I'm tired of shaving." And, uh, I hate. Well, I just hate shaving. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I mean, I I'd have to buy them little blades with you know the go to Dollar Tree and get the uh, the the blades, but then I I hated shaving. And then I just soon like my hair, just cut my hair off, and then I won't have to mess with it for a year. And I just soon to shave all the beard down, don't have to mess with it for about three months, except a little skizzers, a little scissors right here in the front, and do that. What do you do? Did, did, did you invest in all the fancy stuff they claim you need, like the lotions and the? Uh... Oh hell no! No. Oh hell no! It don't it don't get all itchy and scratchy. I try I've tried to grow mine out a couple of times. And mine gets all scratchy and itchy. Well, then you got to let it get past that phase. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got yeah, you you got the the shit feeling stage. Well, maybe if I took a shower more than once every 3 weeks, I guess that probably help, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't take one that often. What the hell, I, right? I, I don't go out of the house. So what I need to take a shower for? That's the way I look at it, anyway. <laughs> you know, are you are you still doing the golden showers though? Uh, no, I don't have anybody around. You know, what, who am I supposed to do it with? I, huh? <laughs> myself. Well, you know, ha- have a little imagination. What the hell, right? Well, uh, I'm not quite as good as you are at that kind of stuff. <laughs> Hey, are you? Did you want to put headphones in? Uh, I got them plugged in, but uh, let me see real quick. Let me see if it's gonna work. I yeah, don't you know. Can. Try them out. Well, it's just the little the little iPhone things you get when you get a telephone, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. If you have those with the little mic on it, that would yeah, that would work real good. We could hear okay. you just a little better, probably. I don't know, man. How do you get How do you get it to work? I. I I listen to them when I'm, you know, riding a little bicycle or whatever. But I, I are they I, plugged you know, in your are they plugged into your phone right now? Yeah, yeah, they're plugged so, in. So can you hear me through your earbuds or through no, the no? no? Well, I mean, uh, no, I don't. I can't hear you through them. Hit hit the uh, microphone part on the other side and see if you can turn them on right there. The little microphone. Yeah, just like pinch it. There should be like maybe an on off button on that thing it says it's got it on i i hit it and it went red so i turned it back to white but it's not on yeah it's not on we can't hear you through the mic. Ah, don't worry about it heck with it okay i'm a wrestler i don't need that <laughs> no i just i just want to see where his head's like floating all different things the whole time like it's not <laughs> like it's not just sitting right there and it, where it's doing everything well, I can't afford a fancy studio like you guys. You know, heck, well, I ain't you just... making big money on some uh, wrestling YouTube show, you know. So, you know, I'm down here in Louisiana, you know, in the swamps. I barely got internet service. Yeah, well, you're doing good. You're doing good. I'm, I, hey, I'm just happy you're on. We can hear you good enough. Happy you're here. I, t- I told everybody I was ignoring them a little bit ago because I was trying to – 
do the email thing to you. I said we had a great walkthrough the other day. We had it all figured out, and then you you, you called it on the fly today. Somebody said, "Yeah, uh, well, I, was, I thought, man, I'd just go ahead and do the computer, but then it don't want to work either. So what the heck? It's probably my equipment. I you know I got like 1980 equipment." You know, I, I can't afford new stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm just be honest. I'm poor, so. Well, maybe somebody will give us some super chats in here for you today. Yeah, <laughs> OMG su super chat, baby. OMG su so hey, I, I got, I, I, you know, since you're 70, you know, a few days ago anyway, I, I need I need some information. Was you actually born in Seymour, Indiana? Yeah. You were. What was the name of the hospital? Or were, uh, snack, you born, were you born at home, in, you know, at home no. or in a gully <laughs> or something? Snack Memorial Hospital. You you're born at home. No, I wasn't yeah. born at home. They didn't have hospitals back then is what he's saying. He's ribbing you. No, okay, no. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Black delivered me. In, oh, you uh, really know the doctor's name, huh? Yeah, Dr. Black. He he died a few years back, but he was my family doctor till he croaked. Wow. Then I went. Then I went to the guy that worked under him, Doctor Calhoun. Now he's now he's retired too. That's then amazing. I went to, then I went to Doctor McDougal, and then uh, and now he's retired three. So damn, I just can't get sick anymore. I guess or just man, don't go to just, doctors. Man, when you make seventy, you're outliving everybody. What the heck's going on with these doctors? Well, they're supposed to be giving me. Well, I think they're keeping the population down or whatever. You know what the hell, right? Yeah. Well. Hey, I mean, speaking yeah, of. If you're a doctor, a couple operations, you can retire. So, you know, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're right. Okay. Hey, Dang, I know you're probably not on social media, but I was advertising your birthday as well. So we got a double birthday celebration yeah. today. Monday, one man gang turned 64, baby. Yes, on I Monday. do. Monday, February the 12th. Wow. Me, it... I, I don't know if you know this, but myself and Mr. Abraham Lincoln share a birthday. I just, Holy shit! Did not know uh, that. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, that's four, impressive. Four, four scores and seven years ago, baby. Uh, Don't get any it. better than that. That's it. Who do you share your birthday with? You got anybody famous? Uh, hey, B Babe Ruth was born February the sixth, and I was the seventh. Yeah, so it was like close, it, it was like two two superstars together, baby. Uh, I'll, I'll give you that one, Babe Ruth. But I don't know. Is he, you know, Abraham Lincoln, Babe Ruth? Come on now. Damn. I guess it's according to who you're asking. If it's a sports person, it might yeah. be Babe Ruth, but. You know, in overall history, I guess you got to go with Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, but yeah, but when Babe Ruth hit fifty nine home runs, whose record did he break? Uh, he uh, broke his he broke his own. I have you no didn't idea. Even let him I know because I because I knew he knew the answer and he was going to milk it. Then he was going to no, burn no, me. No, I don't. I, I'm I'm going to be honest with you. I, I couldn't tell you the first thing about baseball. I, I don't. I don't. I couldn't even name. You know, Johnny Bench, maybe uh, Pete Rose. I mean, other than that, I couldn't name another player. Hey, now you just mentioned Seymour, Indiana. Have you, do you do you recall ever being in Seymour, Indiana? I honestly, I honestly don't. I, Look at this. I, I, Look what I got right here: International Championship Wrestling, Seymour, Indiana, Thursday, November twelfth, down there at the bottom, seven foot, five hundred pound Crusher Broomfield versus Convertible Blonde Rick Star. Wow. That's, don't that's, get any better than that. I honestly don't remember that at all. I'll just be, you know. I don't is, either, so which, what the hell. Which isn't and, unusual. There's a lot a lot of places I don't ever remember being. Yeah. I'll, see, I'll see matches on YouTube. People will send me, and I'm like, man, I don't even remember wrestling that guy. Right. You know, and obviously it happened because it's right there. But I, And I got a picture from that night. That's me oh, in the yeah, uh, top. Is and that that's, that's me uh, squatting down in the front? I don't know. Uh that's me. That's the tallest one. There is me there. The one he's got the arm around. Yep, yeah. me and my brother and my cousin. So that oh, was that wow. night. That was I that. You exact... didn't like. You didn't like Crusher Broomfield. You didn't want his picture. Was I was deal? scared of you, man? You scared me too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I get a lot of Crusher Broomfield stuff when I go out and do signings or whatever. It's it's pretty amazing. I never, you know, I just thought the character would fade away, but. Uh, I get I get a whole bunch, you know. They'd be like, "Hey, I remember when you wrestled that bear," and I'm like, "Yeah, I wrestled a bear." Somebody just asked about that in the chat about you wrestling the bear. Tell us a little oh, bit really? about that. What was that like? Uh, it was uh, well before we went out with the bear. The guy gave me some pointers, you know. 
the bear was a pretty good shooter. He took me down three or four times, <laughs> rode me a couple of times behind. You know, he, he won on points, but uh, <laughs> I, I give it. A, I, I put up a good battle with him, but uh, it was good. Nah, really, the bear was unbelievable. I mean, he was honestly – he could honestly work. I mean, he'd grab your leg, you know, and stuff like that. And just – you just – couldn't be rough with him. I didn't want to like, you know, rough him up or nothing, which, you know, I don't know if I could or not, but you know, it was basically a work, but you know, the bear was kind of on the smelly side, but. I mean, were you, know, you scared uh, of it at all? Was there any chance that it like attack you for real? I don't think so. They had a muzzle on him. They, they right. put a muzzle and I believe he was pretty well trained to kind of do that kind of stuff. So he, he was also pretty well had a bunch of tranquilizers. <laughs> He'd be out in the back, and you'd see all the fucking needles oh, in his in his see, butt. I didn't, know, I didn't know all that, you know. Yeah, he was he could barely move. <laughs> when they come over with the finish, they say, "You mind putting the bear over?" And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't mind. You want me yeah. to get a little juice or anything? Uh, what? You... So you uh, lost yeah. to the bear, huh? I mean, you know, how many people in your life can say you wrestled a bear? Come on. That's true. You know, maybe Rip Rip may have wrestled a bear. I got in there with him, but I just ran. For, I was just a heel. Yeah. And and I just ran and w- wouldn't and never touched him or anything. Yeah, well, my size, you know, because I was so big, it kind of kind of took away from the bear. Really, I mean, the bear was big, but you know, with me in there with him, it didn't look quite that big. So, but it, it was an experience. I, you know, I think I wrestled him two or three times. You know, well, around a couple of little towns. What was so funny is like when you looked at, if you remember the ICW Open. It got so many. You didn't even have to be on TV, but you'd be open because they showed they had that Midnight Express music. And there's you wrestling the bear. That's when Lanny hit you with that fucking uh, crutch in the trap. It looked oh, yeah, like it yeah. hit in the head. You yeah. took the, you took that sit through bump on the floor. Pez went diving through the rope. We stopped it with the freeze frame. You had all these guys projecting all this shit. Randy Pop doing something, do, dropping the elbow on the, on Wee Willie, the midget and everything. And it was just, you made everybody, and they don't even have to be on TV because the open, you saw that to open the show and at the end of the show, and that was uh, the highlights. Yeah, and Randy, was, uh, I, I saw it on you on the, your channel. Not, well, I get your channel. Uh-huh. Bonds, I get I don't know whose channel it really is. It's but Rips, it baby. Wrestling with Rip Rogers. Yeah, I miss okay. your technology. Well, I, I miss your technology. I, I saw it on Wrestling with Rip Rogers uh, thing. You had the opening on it. That, that was a pretty exciting opening, really. Yeah, it was. And, Ran- you know, Randy, that's all Randy just doing it. He did all the editing at the house. Really? That's amazing. Yeah, that's he amazing. did all especially, the books. Especially back in those days. You know, that's pretty amazing. Right. You know, on the show, Garvin beating the heck out of Andre, man. He was stomping Andre and hit him with the turnbuckle and all kind of stuff. Yeah, it was. Who who uh, was that? Was that you that fell in the mud at the end, uh, toward the end end of you? No, that that was the girls. And one of them was was, uh, Mighty Cupid, I think. Uh, And the girls was, I think they pulled him in the mud or they pulled the ref in the mud or whatever. Well, it, it was just showing you all the different things of the promotion where you could have a good time. Right, right, what, what, right. Was what it was. They didn't. Right. They didn't realize we was on the shitty station <laughs> with the shitty time slot. We'd get knocked around, and the guys that worked for us were either uh, uh, before they were major stars or after they <laughs> were major stars, and they were just in there for a cup of coffee. But it was. It well, was great. you can't. Yeah, but honestly, you you know, you had Bob Orton Jr. He went on to do bigger things. I mean, what the heck? He was already a big star, and then he left there, went to you know Bill Watts, and then he yep. went up to New York, and you know, so I don't and they know. Make, you know? They made the Garvin. They made Garvin the NWA champion for a exactly. couple of coffee, but he, he but it the, was right. He got to be the world champion for NWA, so you know. Yeah. So. And uh, Bob Roop went on and did other things, and. I went on and did other things and you went on and did other things. So, you know, a lot of guys did. Yeah. Luckily, luckily, I mean, you know, if it wasn't for ICW, I probably would have still been in Spartanburg, you know, living in Spartanburg, just hanging out there under a bridge somewhere, you know, if I didn't call Randy on the phone that Paul Christie gave his number as I was working for one of bruisers, I'd have never, uh, I'd have never, I would have been, I've been living in Indiana working uh, 
mud shows <laughs> or whatever, because I wouldn't have known, because I was never even trained, right? So what the hell? Yeah, so well, we, when I went there, you might as well say I wasn't trained. I've been doing outlaw shows, which now they, you know, now it's indie shows, but I was doing outlaw shows, you know, in mm -hmm. the Carolinas, but I didn't know anything, man. I didn't know how to do a promo. I'd never done a promo. I'd never, you know, done anything, basically. Just, I'd been in the ring and wrestled around a little bit. I knew how to get a little bit of juice and this and that, but I, I didn't know nothing, man. I was terrified. I'd never left home. That's the first time I'd ever left home, you know? That's awesome. What a story, what a story that is. Yeah. Then yeah. all of a sudden, then all of a sudden you're a worldwide superstar. Well, I don't because know I mean. because you had an extra seat in Jay Eagle's That's van. It. That's it. And exactly you come on correct. down, and Randy saw you and went, "Oh, look at him!" Gee, yeah. he, he, he. <laughs> right. I wonder you're if you're he exactly could... correct about that. I wonder That's if how it could... happened. If I wouldn't have made that one trip, I probably uh -huh. would never never would have been there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's how life can change for right. you. Just out of certain things, you know, you make a decision in life and that's how things could change for you, you know? Right. So for me, it was good. I didn't, you know, I didn't care if I was making, you know, $200 or whatever. I didn't care. I was just it wasn't happy. about the money, was it? Not to me. It wasn't. I don't know. No, it wasn't. Guy. It wasn't about the money to me either. That's how stupid I was. <laughs> I was but, just having a good time. I didn't care, man. I was, I was living the life. Yeah, you, you, you live. What do you have? Three in the apartment over there at Zandale. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh -huh. yeah. We all, we all split the apartment, and you know, and you so, get, you was wrestling every day. Every day wrestling somewhere. Yeah, exactly. and then, and then Ernie I come. Care. I didn't care about riding the ring truck. I crawl up in the back of that ring truck like anybody else, man. Yeah. Find the softest two by four and you know stretch out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shit. You you was just happier as a pig and shit. It was it was just so much fun. I was. I thought that. Yeah, was my life, man. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're doing the same thing when Ernie Ernie finds you, takes you to Bill Watts. Now all of a sudden, you get paid. And you're going, what the fuck? This must be a mistake. Well. <laughs> I wouldn't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd say it like that, but, uh, you know, yeah, I was getting paid a little better, but, you know, heck, I didn't care. Right. I, I'm one of the few probably in the wrestling business. I didn't really, you know, when I look at my check, I was like, well, that's fine, whatever, you know. I didn't care if I was in front of 10,000 people and they paid me $200. I, I was like, well, whatever, I didn't, you know, I was happy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was just happy to be able to go to the ring. I, that was my main thing. I just enjoyed going to that ring and and doing whatever I could do to entertain the people. I was, you know, I couldn't climb turnbuckles and do all that kind of stuff because main thing was my eyes. I had bad vision, and if I, you know, I, I would love to be able to do turnbuckle stuff, but I couldn't trust not hurting the guy because I I just couldn't see him. You know, I could see him, but it was all fuzzy and blurry. And, so I had to stay off to the high flying stuff and, you know, things like that. I could, had to stay on the mat, basically. So, but, but man, I loved every, every night I got to go out. I didn't care if I was spit on. People, you know, threw chewing tobacco all over me, threw beer all over me. I didn't care, man. I loved it. It was like, man, what a life. Mm -hmm. This is the greatest life in the world. Come back with chewing tobacco all over your face. <laughs> Every every day was a holiday. I, I know it. exactly. It's like you know, like the old saying: if you, you know, well, what is it about the work thing? If if you find something you love to do, you you never work a day in your life. You know, so. Luckily, gotta give I a shout out here real quick. I gotta interrupt real quick. We got a we got a uh, super chat here. Happy birthday, gang! Thanks for the wonderful memories. Hey. And, and Clayton too. <laughs> his his wife is uh, birthday today. His wife Amanda's birthday is today. So. Oh, wow. We got we got triple birthdays here. Happy birthday to, so I, to I, her too. Then I had to get that in, and then I heard you. Um, did you just talk? You said we Willie, didn't you? Just a little bit ago. I think Rip did. I got a question for you. Then I got this picture, and I want to see if you can identify. We had this picture up a little bit ago. If I can find it and see if you think is that we Willie? Do you think that's we Willie? Uh. I'm not sure. It could be Tom Cruise. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not really sure. 
I can't say for sure, man. I'm not, like I said, I, that's I that's know. me as a kid. And on the back of the picture, my mom had written "We Willie," but Rip didn't think it looked like him, so I didn't know if you would recognize him or not. I I couldn't give you an honest answer on that one. You know, heck, I didn't. You know, there's only a few. Uh, well, now uh, you know. Back then, we just called them midgets, but now you got to call them little people and whatever. You know, but. Uh, you know, I knew like uh, what was the main guy, Lord Littlebrook, uh -huh. uh, Little Tokyo, those type. I could recognize those right off, but uh, a lot of them I just did not. I don't know. Hey, L Little Tokyo, he was the wrestler I stole his line. No matter was it Tokyo, how was your match? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, to oh. Tokyo was a trip, man. He oh, travel, yeah. He'd travel with us, and he'd like to drink, so he'd get all drunk up in the back seat, and we'd have to carry him into his room. You know, we'd park and carry him in. He'd be, like, just talking. Don't even know what he's saying. He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had him drunk, passed out with his mouth open. So I had to, so we had the fucking Polaroid. So I pulled the worm out and put, put about a, a half an inch from his mouth. He's, ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. Not, not you, Rip. You wouldn't no. do that, would you? Come we on. Wouldn't have, we wouldn't have ribbed nobody. No, no, no. Especially you. Oh. Rip wasn't a river, was he? Oh, hell no. No, no. Uh -uh. So, so let me ask you, uh, Hustler, back in the, when you was back in your early days of posing in contests, did you have any idea you'd make 70 years old? I did, did, you even think, did you even think about it? No. I, was, I remember when I hit 30, I said, oh, my God, I'm old. <laughs> and then when I hit 40, I said, I'm built better at 40 than I was at 30. Right. Because right. I, kept, I kept with it, right? And then all of a sudden, I see all my buddies just drop off the face of the earth one by one, it seemed like. And I'm going, uh, and I'm going just, oh, 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 my gosh, this guy was, this guy was jacked. He was so fast in the ring. He was such a good wrestler. He was so good at this and that. And then he's gone all of a sudden. Yeah. You're right, man. Uh, yeah, but a lot of, I mean, you had, your habits wasn't bad habits. You didn't like, I don't think you was you know, heavy into any drugs or drinking or no, see, uh, that's what I mean. Uh, I believe it has a lot to do with your lifestyle. I mean, it, who else just told you that Eugene or Renee, one of those two just said that about Eugene just told you that, that you didn't do too much bad shit. Well, excessive masturbation, but besides that, you know, what the hell, right? Well, they say that's good for you, though. I mean, maybe, yeah. you know, like I said, that's they, that's what the doctors say. All oh, that's supposed to be good for you, so. And my right forearm was always a little bit bigger, you know. I I, I tried lefty, but it was sort of, it felt like a strange a strange woman with the left hand, so, so I just stuck to a righty more, you know. Yeah. But what the hell, right? So you guys, you two guys grew up together? Y'all knew each other growing up, or? Y'all live near each other or something? We're 20 years apart. We're both from Seymour. When Rip would come back to Seymour when he was on the road, I don't know, once he, every couple of years or whatever, and do a show in Seymour, my dad would help promote it a lot of times. He would sell okay. tickets, and we would set up chairs and sell concessions and that kind of stuff. But we, we tried to figure it out one day how that ever even came about. Yeah. And we never really, We never really did, but it was always my dad was always the one that, he would come to the house. It was like Christmas, like a couple nights or the night before the show, he would always come to the house and they would kind of game plan or count money or, mm -hmm. or do whatever. And yeah, his dad could, he'd say, okay, we're, we're going to have a show. And his dad was a principal at the middle school. So he'd be hustling tickets to all these kids and he'd have like 13, $1,400 after a couple days. And he had, don't even have a card or nothing. So we had three shows in a row. We had three shows in a row do a thousand people, which is unbelievable. Wow. You know, and it was because it was just a, a local thing. And my, my brother was on the, my sister worked for the mayor. So she get free shit. My brother-in-law worked for the, uh, uh, the, the cities and, and worked on the cable station. So we had free promos locally. And then, uh, his dad ran uh, the rest of the stuff. So we would have no money invested at all. 
and a bunch of no names. Sometimes we would have a star or two, this or that. And shit, I even had Garvin and the Orange Sheet come in. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, but they didn't out. They didn't out draw Dale T and T Man. No, it was all same it, as same it, crowd. It, no basically. matter what it was, it was about. It was the same crowd. There's going to be a thousand people show up for wrestling, and then uh, the next day, uh, it's all gone back to just being Seymour again. Yeah, but you were. I mean, you go out there when they announced you from local. You was like the big hero, right? Right. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, when you first start out, they tell you where you're from and this and that. And then I said, fuck this. And I started going from Seymour, Indiana. Would right. anybody else fuck them? You know what I mean? That's where I'm from. I'd tell the guy, no, this is where I'm from. That's what I want. They said, well, yeah. I'll do it if they say so. If they say you're, got it, you're from Hollywood, California. I said, I know, but just try and do this. And then they just. We just went with the flow. Then it became like, well, hell, that's a, John Mellencamp. Yeah, that was like it was real, you know. So yeah, where, where, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where, 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 how many different places were you announced from? Just one, Chicago. Okay, and Halstead. Well, I, I was. That's where I was really born. I was okay. honestly truly born in Chicago. But uh -huh. I lived there till I was six years old. Then uh, my mom took me to South Carolina, Spartanburg. So that's where I was from six years old all the way to rest till I left for wrestling. That's where I was, Spartanburg, you know. So, you know, so when I got to, when I finally made it to Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling, you know, to actual wrestle, uh, I got to, when I was main event in Spartanburg, you know, that was, people ask me, you know, what was your biggest thrill? Yeah. In professional wrestling, you know, and I, I always tell them, you know, getting a main event in my hometown, you know. Spartanburg going in that back dressing room where all the I used to when I was a kid I'd see all the guys going to the dressing room and things like that you know and uh you know people don't hey I don't think people really understand it but yeah it's you know, wild yeah I mean the building only can hold maybe 1500 people 2000 maybe max you know it's just a small auditorium back then you know and that's back when they, you know you get everybody could smoke so it'd be like smoke oh people. yeah You'd have the, they had the low ring light, you know, like a in the middle. A lot of guys take backdrops, and their feet would hit the ring light. Not me, of course, but uh, <laughs> some guys. But <laughs> but just as you know, just to say, you know, I've been you know Ma uh, Gar Madison Square Garden, uh, Spectrum, all these places. But to me, just being in my hometown, and you know, because I grew up right there and watch mid Atlantic my whole life as that's, you know, I knew magazines that there was other places, but I, I, I didn't ever, I could not see them, you know, actual the shows because all we got was mid Atlantic championship wrestling. So that's what I grew up on. And then, so when I got to actually work for mid Atlantic, that was like to me the biggest deal in the world, you know? Yep. So. That's awesome. Hey, I found a, I found Can't hear you. you gotta hold on. There. So you beat him, huh, Rip? Yeah, that was in in Rupp Arena, and uh, let's see, uh, Lou Ferrigno was there one year, and this is when he was the Incredible Hulk on TV. Yeah. And then, yeah. and the next year, Arnold Schwarzenegger come in. Wow. And he was hot off the. Uh, that movie he made, Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he was hot off that, and he was and he was a, a devout wrestling fan. He 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 loved wrestling, and so we did twenty four hundred people at the Mister Kentucky contest. That was out drawing the Mister Olympia at that time. Wow! Because we put it on the on the wrestling program, right? Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. I found out that the the bodybuilding was as crooked as wrestling, <laughs> <laughs> and you had to pay your dues, etc. And uh, who guy, actually? Well, you came in fourth. Who who actually won it? That the uh, guy that won it had got second two years in a row, was on the physique committee, and he was going to retire. Oh. Uh, so they basically. I thought. I said. I said. I'm going to win this or get second. 
And then you got, uh, you got four. Yeah. And then after that, they said, well, and then most of the, uh, most of the judges were, they sort of were sort of like Jimsy Barnett, my boy, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I, you learned that lesson. You learned they played their favorites and, uh, you were sort of disappointed, but I said, well, I'm going to work hard and do the best I can. And actually won, uh, won two with no steroids, which, and I just do that to all you motherfuckers on steroids. You so know. how many, how many, what was your carbohydrate intake per day for, uh, I, I ate almost, like I made, I ate almost all carbohydrates because I trained so long and mostly I did a minimum of 2000 squats every day Dang. and, and 2000 knee pull ins. The record was 5,000 and 5,000. And that took five hours. Good so, gracious. and I trained every body part every day. I never heard anybody do it that way before, but in, but I got the endorphins pump and I felt good the whole day because I got all them endorphins going and everything. And I've uh, seen you do them uh, uh, chair squats, I guess you call them. Is it called chair squats? I ain't sure what it's called. We, uh, yeah, I would just hold the edge because my left knee, I, I'd hurt. I'd had surgery years ago, and it, it always hurt a little bit. And if I went like a half inch down to four, it sort of felt like a knife going right, in. I said, right. well, I, I, I better not go all the way down because I'm hurting it. I can tell that. Uh, so, if I'm not – I don't know if it was it might have been Memphis wrestling. I'm not sure, but I saw a video on I guess YouTube where you challenged that I could do this the whole show. Smoky Mountain, I think. Yeah, I did squats. Smoky Mountain. I don't yeah, know. Mountain. yeah, but the reason I did I it. Tell that. That's good. Well, Aunt, the miser. Remember, he did sit ups the whole hour one time on well, the ICW like t-shirt, record, didn't he? Uh, like in the Guinness Book or something. Yeah, at that time he did uh, six thousand and thirty three sit ups. God dang. He, and then, uh, so I, so I want, so I like doing stuff like that because it was all body weight. Tell me about Cornette calling you. Oh, so, oh, so Cornette called me, uh, to work Smoky Mountain. He says, Rip, can you still do all those squats? I said, Jimmy, call me, uh, what the, it's two, call me back about 310. He goes, Oh, okay. So he called me back and says, Hey, I want to talk to you about them squats. I said, uh, yeah, I can do them for an hour. He goes, well, how do you know? I said, I just goddamn did them, Jimmy. <laughs> That's what you left out. He called and said, can you do them for an hour? Yeah. Uh -huh, and then he, Rip said, call me back in an hour 10. Yeah. And he did them. And then he said, yeah, I can do them. I just did them. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, the, the, when I was growing up, there was some guy, he would be running, you know, five to at least five miles a day. Just a local Seymour guy, right? And he was an older guy in shape and shit. And he could outrun everybody. And he and he never missed. And so I was talking to him about working out. And he says, well, yeah, I run all this way, but I do it every day. If I do it every day, it's no big deal. It is to everybody else because they haven't done it. But I've worked my way up to this. Right. Because right. oh. that bodybuilding was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Really? To go to, be to, go to bed hungry every day. And then right before I go to bed, I do another 2,000 knee pull-ins and 10 sets of front raises and 10 wow. sets of side raises just to do it because I knew I was only going to be in my 20s one time in my life. And it was the hardest thing I did. So I got in 12 contests in a year and a half, which is impossible. Wow. And, one two, and one, two with no steroids. Training Man. as non we, – we'd be, we'd be doing wrestling, right? So I'm doing exercises there in the locker room the whole time. Everybody else is just bullshitting and doing whatever. Now I'm like a fucking nut working out. I'm focused because when, when my body goes, I won't be able to do it anymore. So I'm going to go. I saw you uh, uh, flexing your bicep on something the other day, man. You still got a, you still got a pretty good little knot up there, man. You got a good bicep still. Well, that's cold. I tore my bicep doing cheat curls, 225 <laughs> on the 12th set. And I tore my bicep, so now it's that way forever. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's it still hey, big. It still at, looks good. At least you're honest about it. So what the heck? No, that's why I got the peak. <laughs> it still looks I, good. I, hey, yeah, so I we used to work out at the same gym in Seymour, Crossroads Gym. So I'll just tell you a little bit about what I would see. Like when I was in high school or college, he would have a note card every day. Yep. And he would do like let's say a hundred sets of a hundred of like 
uh, crunches, and he would write like crunches or abs, and then he would just mark tally mark a hundred, and then five, and then five more. So like two thousand of those knee pull ins, the the squats. It was all body weight stuff, and he would just every day have a note card, two thousand sets of or two thousand reps of every everything every single day. Wow. Did this exact same thing. That's, and it was Jerry Springer on this I mean, that, that, that amazes me, to be honest. I mean, I mean, I only think, I mean, Schwarzenegger and them guys, they wouldn't do sets like that, even if it was body weight. They wouldn't be, you know, there's no way. Well, everybody that got in them's contest, they all trained a different way. Right. You know, uh, some of them was doing push pulls, some was doing uh, uh, chest, chest, shoulders, and back legs back and biceps different splits some people were doing uh two times every nine days i just did the same thing every day didn't give a shit but, I you, just had, went, but you had to go in the ring and and give a nice 15 20 minute match every night too though right right but you know it didn't get any better than that is is shooting for a bodybuilding contest and your pro wrestling was which is all you want to do every fucking day yeah. Holy shit. And if you had an off day, you was like depressed. <laughs> Did Macho Man get hot because you beat him? He's like, rah, 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 rah. oh yeah, he quit. After I beat him twice, he quit. <laughs> and he took and he took his body, he took his bodybuilding trophies and he smashed them all with a ball bat. <laughs> oh yeah, he got he got mad. You know what I mean? That's I, great. I, I was in I he I seen him coming in one day, so I start doing knee pull ins. Two hours later, I'm still on the bench doing them. And he walked up to me and glared at me, goes, You're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like laughing. And I go, And I just said, I said, uh, No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but that was funny. Hey, gang, somebody wants to see uh, if you will do a Dusty Rhodes impersonation, impression for us. Maybe you guys I, could talk I, in Dusty back and forth. That'd be awesome. I just, I just be honest with you. I cannot do impersonations at all. Um, I can't. I'm oh, this guy good. says you're great at it. No, no, I don't think so. I don't know where he gets that. I don't, I don't think I am. There's a lot of guys that are, but I'm, I'm, I'm just not good at doing oh. voices. All right. I, I remember watching the, the clip where you was wrestling Dusty and you was doing the slow motion of a Chahay, and he was doing the and he hit you with the elbow and the stagger, the stagger, and you're doing that, the Akeem gimmick of a Chahay. It was just funnier. It was just yeah, funnier man. shit. That was just a big cartoon. I mean, basically, that's all Akeem was, was a cartoon. You know, so. But it, it worked. I didn't think, I hated it at first. I was like, what the heck am I doing? You know, so. But it, I guess, I guess Vince was, you know, was right. I guess it worked eventually. So. Oh, I thought it was great. People Boy. still talk about it. Every, you know, signings. That's the main thing. They, you know, hey, that's Akeem. Look at that, Akeem. You know, so. Yeah, well. When you wrestled Bam Bam, somebody's talking about it in the chat. Was that? Uh, were you Akeem? That it was WrestleMania four. They said. Was that? That was one man gang. One man gang. I, I believe that was the uh, tournament when they had to. Uh, tournament for the uh, world title at the time we you know had a round robin little tournament and i went against bigelow i think i think i got disqualified if not it might have been him or against savage i'm not sure it was one of them slick got involved and uh i got disqualified or something i, I don't know it's hard to remember but uh yeah. you know people and, and had, somebody you want to know if you still talk to slick I, I do, I, I do. He'll probably call me Monday on my birthday. He never misses my birthday. So, uh -huh. but we we talk every couple of months. You know, it's always the same old talk about you know we should have been millionaires and how they cheated us. Yeah, you know the same old stuff. <laughs> talk, uh -huh. he, he's always like, man, I should have got me a YouTube channel and started me a thing and make a bunch of money like all these guys do now on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, you should have, but. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing well though he, you know he's got his church and things like that so you know he's he's doing well that's cool millionaire youtuber just like rip yeah that's it that's it getting that getting that money from youtube just <laughs> then, I, then i'm chair, running that just sit in your chair and let vaughn do all the work and uh, you ain't gotta worry about it <laughs> 
<laughs> then I'm running down and running down to Dollar Tree and get me a dollar twenty-five two-liter pop and a, some mashed mashed taters and uh, throw some uh, baked beans in there. <laughs> Hey, ain't nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. Nobody says you got to live on T-bone steak every day. I mean, heck, that's what they got the dollar twenty-five store for. That's right. Do you have a big birthday plans on Monday? No, I got to go to a foot doctor on Monday. Have my feet worked on. Oh, you do? Yeah, I got you... I got a real bad uh, big toe callus, you know, because it's crooked. So I, I keep getting this big callus on it. So he has to trim it down with a you know scalpel and everything. So I got to do that. Then he cuts my toenails, you know, because if I cut mine too deep and they start bleeding, I bleed to death because I'm on blood thinners. Oh yeah. So so got I it. do that. I have to do that on Monday. So nothing Man. big. My pick up some food, you know, is treat myself. <laughs> you know because I, I i never eat out i stay here at the house you know i don't i'm not a restaurant going type person i don't i just don't do it so if you do go out for your birthday what where, where would you go what do you eat well, it ain't gonna be going out it's gonna be getting something and coming back home and you know watching all right TV. what would that be That's then gonna be <laughs> what would that be what would you pick uh, up you a steak I'm guy thinking, you... i'm thinking monday i might try me some uh canes chicken tenders you know i hadn't had them in a long long time so i might try that you know, it's either going to be that or uh, uh, maybe a pizza pie. I ain't had no pizza pie in a real long time. You know, it's just something I just don't eat. So yeah. now we're starting to dream about food. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So I wants to know where the name Broomfield came from. I have no idea. He just gave Rip, it to you. Rip maybe does. I, I don't. I, I, I can. I, I can. I can tell you what it was all about. Oh, cool. It's like at, at the time there was no cable TV, right? It was just in its infancy. So it's like when on uh, Garvin was wrestling Andre because that was from the Knoxville territory. A lot of the footage on that was from the Knoxville territory. And what we did was we copied the angles we did. Uh, with Crusher Blackwell, so Garvin made it Crusher Broomfield. So it was CB. Remember the big box that had CB on it and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, so we did a lot of angles that was on the Knoxville TV, but that wasn't seen in our southern Illinois markets or uh, the uh, the Kentucky markets and Tennessee markets. We didn't see that. So uh, they were repeat angles, but nobody had really seen them. Cause uh, Garvin had all he had access to all that footage in Knoxville, right? Okay. So Crusher was Crusher, and then the Broomfield right. was just made up. That yeah, the, be that, like that, um, Blackwell. Blackwell. Yeah, because Crusher Blackwell was a real coordinated guy, and he yeah. was and he, and he was heavy, real athletic. Really, he was really in the world's strongest man competition. Oh, really? I didn't. Yeah, know that. like he tear them phone books, and he didn't look. I don't think he worked out at all. He was just a a, nat, a natural guy. Sort of like, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I, like I Danny a, Hodge. I made a tour of Japan with him, you know, and got to work him over there. So yeah, uh -huh. he could drop, he could drop kick and mm -hmm. everything. And he was had to be well four hundred or better, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah, he, he was a heck of an athlete, you know. So because I remember when you came in, and then Randy was talking about you to Garvin, right? And Garvin says, "No, he's just." The, the stuff we did with Crusher Blackwell, we'll just make it Crusher Broomfield. Huh. And, it'll, and to, to most of the markets, it's uh, it's different. You know, something if something works in this territory, it's going to work at the next territory because no matter what, people are people, human are humans, wrestling fans are wrestling fans. Yeah, that's true. And, right. uh, yeah. Especially when you didn't have, you know, back then there was no internet, no nothing. Right, you, know, you so. didn't know anything. It was no. a, it was a big deal to see just some strange, some foreign wrestling from right. a different territory. It was great. I just remember the character was that he had me on a con. He had me like a contract on me. Right, and he was supposedly paying my sister's hospital bills. She yeah. was sick in the hospital and come to find out later that he didn't pay the bills and she passed away. And, you know, and that's how basically, you know, Garvin was like, why do you take that stuff from him, man? Yeah. You can be your own man. And uh -huh. then eventually him and Randy had matches for the contract. Yeah. You know, so.
And that's how I broke free, you know. And we did the box, like you said, the CB box. Uh-huh. I believe they did it first with the little guy, the little uh, the midget guy. He come running out with a mighty cute outfit, on. mighty Canadian bumblebee. Canadian bumblebee. Exactly. Yeah, CB. Yep. But then uh, later on, it, you know, it was you know showed that that's what had happened. So uh-huh. that was uh, how it went. Where did you after you left uh, ICW? Where'd you go to? I went to Watts for five months. Then did I went you? to then I went to Fuller's for eleven months. Then I went to Ole for eight months. Then I went to Wahoo for like six months. Wow. And, uh, then I went. Then I went to Jarrett's, and then I went to Kansas City. Then I went to Calgary. Jeez. Then I went. <laughs> no, I went a whole bunch, and then I, and I just did it to experience. To, who to work for. Right. And then, so I, so I said, I can always go in the first time and then they'll see I work hard and I'll leave on my terms. Then I could always go back and then they'll treat me better. Oh, okay. Because no, I'll put anybody over. Don't, I don't give a shit. Don't want a belt. Don't need a fucking belt. Right. Uh, right. I ain't going to overstep my bounds. I understand this shit. You know, uh, if you want to squash me, don't give a shit. It don't matter. I work hard. I respect the fucking business. I love the fucking business. I just, I just want to put me in coach. I just want to play. Yeah, really. That's it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you, uh, you had the flowing blonde locks like uh, nature boy, you know, and all that. Uh, did you ever have to get any color and the blonde hair would turn red and all? Oh that? yeah. Did oh you? yeah. But I did I, it. I, I never. When we was in ICW, I don't remember you ever getting color. But I don't. Let me see. I did it. I uh, see. I, I know I did it in Portland when I was in Kansas City. I did it uh, like five times because I was the boss. And okay. then when I when I worked for Fuller, I had two weeks of cage matches with Austin Idol. I got it one time. Then it, then every night I said, just bust me open, right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was always I was always blade conscious because. I didn't like, uh, I wasn't going to let nobody do it to me. Oh, no, no, no. no. And I seen how guys' heads looked. And so I said, uh, there's blood. There yeah, go, but, right but I got, that was, that was a hard way. Yeah, it looks like right, because that's way up on top. Yeah, that was on the, that was the back of my, I think it was a chair shot or whatever. Oh, okay. So, uh, but, you know, I'd get nicked in the, in the eyebrows and shit. And then I mean, when me and Lanny had the hair match, he uh, we uh, we was hard wearing each other. Mm. So I, I I was head butting him and his eyes and his he all of a sudden he said, I can't take no more. So his eyes was all swollen and they were black and everything. Dang. And we and we was no we was really banging on each other because all the guys from the gym was there. Oh okay. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, that was. There's Rip Bald. Or yeah. shortly after, anyway. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I've been stupid of trying to protect the business, you know, like an idiot. Yeah. We're hurting ourselves, taking the necessary chances, what we didn't need. It's just strange, you know, in, in territories, you know, I went to a lot of different territories, too. So, uh, uh-huh. which I'm glad I did. Right. You know, but uh, the thing was, you know, the boss man, whether it's Bill or Dusty or whoever it happened to be, they didn't even like come and ask you, you know, do you mind getting a little bit tonight? They just walk by and say, fix your gimmick. You're going to have, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just, they didn't even ask. It was like an order almost, you know, yeah. you, you got to get some gimmick tonight for me, you know? So <laughs> When I was, when I was a boss, I never asked anybody to do it. I said, I'll do it. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? And I yeah. knew that I, that I knew I had the bleach blonde hair. And a, a lot of times I would get it on the, the baby face first. Then he'd return the favor. And a lot of times if he got it good, I'd say, I'm just going to steal you. I'm just going to steal your blood. And I'd die. <laughs> yeah. And I'd say now head butt me and whatever. And I would, I'd be wearing all his. And I said, I, if never, you're, I, I, never, said I, I never could get away with that one, but uh, yeah, but I know. was, I didn't I, have the white. I didn't have the blonde hair. So. Right. There's nothing like having real long blonde hair and bleeding. That's, yeah, I know. That's it's great. Your, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, it's uh, visual wise, that's probably one of the best visuals in wrestling is the 
blonde hair turning red, you know, right. crimson mask. Yeah, but like, you know, Randy, he treated every match like Madison Square Garden. So we was going, because he was getting color almost every night, right? Yeah. And because he was just wanting to have a good product. Where I would, if I would have treated all them spot shows like spot shows and never do that shit, you know? Yeah, 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 you're right about that, you know. But man, once you got in, when you was working for a territory, you didn't have no choice. You, I mean, you was basically, you did it. Right. You had to, you know. Yeah, you were told to get it. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And in, I remember when I was in Puerto Rico, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd get some. And then Jose would say, Oh no, amigo, you need more. I said, well, get this, give me yours. And I'd put it back on my <laughs> head. Right. He say, Oh, amigo. He just, and I'd start laughing. I said, Oh no. I said, uh, <laughs> I said, I don't want to, I don't want a head looking like yours. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. That's what I got. I got all kind of, it looks like a roadmap up there. Not quite as bad as Abdullah or some of the guys, but, uh, you know, it's still pretty bad looking, you know, but, yeah, the old cheek. The old cheek. The old cheek was Oh man, yeah, yeah. He he would he would be doing this, and it it was so scarred, calcified, or whatever you want to call it. He could hardly get any color. Man, I remember where I worked Abdullah in uh, Puerto Rico. I mean, he was doing it before he even got to the ring. Oh yeah, <laughs> he'd have that thumb, you know. He'd yeah. put it on his thumb. He'd be hitting it with his thumb like that. I mean, mm-hmm. He was like doing that all going to the ring before yeah. he even started. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> but did he ever get to the ring, or do you attack him on the outside? And, I always uh, attacked him, you know. Yeah, you, you know what Abdullah. There. You can't. There ain't, you know, you're not much. You're going. It's not going to be a one tackle drop down kind of match, you know? So. Yeah. Hey, I think you've seen this on our channel, but I edited it. It's down to about two minutes. We're not going to be able to hear you talk when we, when we see it, but it's you against rip and ICW. It's like two minutes long. So I just edited it, made it shorter. So I just want to show that for, for everybody here real quick. All right. Okay. Couldn't buy myself breakfast. Here we go. Color and elbow hookup. Rick Rogers has all the muscles, but he's a still a little bit mismatched because Crusher Broomfield has some muscles that don't show because they're they're covered with a little bit of ass, adipose but tissue. But nonetheless, he's one of the strongest men in wrestling. Of course, Rip has the Crusher now. And of course, oh, a great move by Crusher Broomfield. Don't know exactly what to call that, but he used the ropes. Red boots, red. Pink shoulder, pink really? forearm. He's oh, look at this. Oh yeah, he's he is something. What's he just he doing there? Right up on the ropes. And Rip Rogers' eyes got bigger saucers that time. Goes for a body press. Bad move. And of course, try a bad try move. Challenge right. at 450 right. pounds. Oh, my gracious. That great elbow. That's that, that, yeah. Look at the fire. But um, I'm not I'm not going to judge him for that. Well, Rip you know. Rogers went to work on the eye of Crusher Broomfield. Now a punch to the chest. chest. Set two. Three. Right to the chin. Left right jab to, to the, the chin. chin. Now they're trading. Okay, and Crusher's come back. I'm afraid I'll make him a little bit angry. Crush will be a bad one to trade blows with. Now gorgeous Gary Royal had him by the feet. And knee to the Rogers. back of Rip, uh, Crush of Broomfield by Rip Rogers after referee Dale Edwards untied him in the rope. He ain't going nowhere. Well, that was two against one. Rip Rogers is an opportunist. Oh, two, two chops. Big forearm by Crush of Broomfield. <laughs> Goes for a turnbuckle. Big foot oh, right close big after food, gorgeous baby. Gary Royal, and I don't think he wants a date. Here's Rip Rogers from the top. He's Crusher on the a... Rip Rogers is on the top. He comes hey, oh. oh. a bad hug by the crusher on Rip Rogers right here on the floor in front of the camera. Rip Rogers coming. Rip Rogers is very resourceful. He's pounding away at the face Punch and head of Crusher Broomfield. We're gonna take a break and come back with more on International Championship Wrestling. Stick around, we'll be back. Wow. How about that? That's classic. What are you talking about? Hey, that's that's as good as you can get right there. Classic, baby. That was wrestling. That was all Rip Rogers. That wasn't me. I was just I just happened to be the person in the ring. Now, can you guys like remember that? Like you I mean, obviously you just watched it, but I, I yeah, you know, I can't say I remember it, but you know, when you play it back, you know, I'm like, man, that's uh I look at it and go, dang, uh, I had to be all ripped because I would never thought of them spots. 
So <laughs> I, you know, I didn't know, man. I didn't know catching the dude coming off the turnbuckle and catching him out on the floor and oh, things well, like that. that, that had Gar- to be- Gar- Gary, when I when I jump, Gary did the nose touched his nose. That's when you turn around and caught me. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, told yeah, I don't even. Yeah. I don't even. You know, I couldn't even tell you how we ended up working each other on TV, but. It, yeah, it was just it was just the end of the show, the program. So we just went right. off the air, right? But uh, you know, and I was so fucking skinny because I was bodybuilding then, right? Right. You were, yeah, you was. Really and and I, I did I did way too much because you was just so fucking big, but I but I was just trying to give it a good match, but it couldn't have been a, it it been like Mike Tyson against some welterweight. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you was just so fucking big and huge. Yeah, and I was. I was too huge. I shouldn't have been. You know, I look back now. I, I wished I could have been maybe a hundred pounds lighter. You know, I could have. You could have. But when I, you know, everywhere I went, they was always going. You need to be bigger. We need you bigger. You know, and I'm like, okay, let me go have another pizza. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but I mean, I was legitimately. I was uh, four hundred. Uh, you know, I was probably four hundred. You know, legitimate. So. Wow. Uh, and that's what I stayed at pretty much my whole career, you know, till I, you know, till I had heart condition and then I had to drop some weight, which I, you know, I have now I'm down to, you know, 320 or whatever. But, you know, even that 320 people going, man, 320. <laughs> yeah. 60 some year olds, 320 pound guys are few and far between. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you so got let, me, let me ask you, Von. You look back and watch your matches or anything? I mean, I never watch mine. I, I mean, all the matches I've been in or whatever, you know, and I've, and I never, I never go back and watch them. I just can't do it because I'm too critical of myself. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, you're talking about me, my like my matches I had. Yeah. Yeah, I used to. I haven't for a while. I like to. You know, it's weird. That's one reason I asked you if you guys remembered it. I've had people send me matches through the internet, you know, that I don't even remember. And I didn't have any close to any kind of career. Either one of you guys did or the amount of matches or things like that. And I don't remember at all some of these matches. That's why I think it's wild to, you know, how much do you guys actually remember um, if you go back and watch them? But to answer your question, I used to watch them a lot more. But so many, many of mine are on like DVD and VHS. So I have burned them to the internet. So when I moved them over i did watch you know a lot of them at that time but yeah some of them are just rotten you know <laughs> yeah you criticize yourself much when you watch i mean oh yeah i think everything looks I horrible done this or i should have done that uh yeah yeah i, I can't I, that's what i always do every time if somebody says watch this i watch it even that one i'm like you know and that was that was really good because like i said rip come up with all them spots you know without him it probably would have been horrible you know i'm just Cause I never was a classic wrestler. I didn't, you know, arm drags and thing. I, I just, you know, I was always put with the brawlers, you know, Bruiser yeah. Brody, Jim Duggan, you know, those, uh, that, you know, or Dusty or guys, Blackjack Mulligan, those type guys, brawlers, you know, fighters. You know, I never was a, a classic, you know, Rip could go out there and wrestle with me or he could have went out there and wrestle with Jack Briscoe and had a hour Broadway, you know, which I could never do. I couldn't do that. You know, I didn't. I couldn't do no leg dive or uh, arm bars and whatever. I, you know, I don't even know the names of them. So, but even today, you wouldn't. You don't go back like on YouTube and look up stuff and and watch it even today. Never. No. Never. Never. I've I've no. never. You know, nothing. Wow. Not I think I would. If I were you, I think I would have to. Especially. I mean. I, I mean, it's history. you've done so I, much. No, you know. What, I don't know. The way I look at it, what good is it to go back and look at it now? I can't change it. Whatever Memory, happened, baby. I mean, I just, I, you know, that's just me. You know, I, I look at my promos or something. Somebody sent me, hey, look at this promo you did. And I'm like, God, that was horrible. I don't even want to listen to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, just, I think most me. people disagree with you because everybody I've seen in the, in the chat and the last time you were on our show when I put out a bunch of stuff, I mean, you were, you're one of the most popular you know, in your generation, wrestlers out there, I think. Everybody loves one-man gang, Akeem, Crusher Broomfield, you name it. 
I've never seen a, a negative comment on anything I've ever put out well, with I mean, you I, in it. I appreciate that. That's nice of people to say, but I'm just saying myself, I feel like, you know, wrestling wise, it, you know, I was a certain niche. I wouldn't like, uh, you know, I, I couldn't go out there and do an hour Broadway or I couldn't go out there. And like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't wrestle certain guys because I just didn't have that style. Like, Rip could probably go out and, you know, wrestle Mil Mascaras and have a super mm-hmm. match. You, I go out there with somebody like that, it would just be god awful because I would have no way to do any of that kind of stuff, you know. No, my match with, with Mill was was double rotten. <laughs> <laughs> but I never uh, worked him, but I always heard, you know, he just he wasn't going to sell no matter what. He wouldn't yeah, have sold that's you. What I always heard. He so you just make things. the money, and they say thank and say thank you very much, and that's it. <laughs> just make the motherfucking money, and you shake your head, going, "I'm glad that's over with." But I made a lot of money, so what the fuck, right? <laughs> that's it. That's all, you know. You know, Somebody wants to know, did you did you hear anything about Billy Jack Haynes today by chance? No, no, nothing. I ain't heard anything. Somebody gave me a snippet. And... There's a rumor out there, and I don't know if it's true. It's all alleged right now that he's been um, arrested, is, is what I gather, for murder or attempted murder, one of the two. What? Do you have any Billy Jack Haynes stories from back in the day? He, I, I, You know, I was with him a lot of places. I was with him in Florida. I was with him in New York, but we kind of – you know, we went our separate ways. We didn't kind of hang out or anything. So, you know, I mean, he was, I mean, when I, you know, a, as a performer and as a ring personality, he was over son of a gun. I just, you know, I can't lie about that. He was, especially Florida and even New York, he got over pretty good. So, but yeah, he had a bad temper, man. He'd go off in a second, you know, but. I, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't hang out with him. I, I just yeah, couldn't yeah. say too much about him that way, you know. Do you have I'll any? Be, I mean, we teamed up in WCW. He was Black Blood or something like that. You know, yeah. we teamed up as a team for a while, and I rode with him a few times. You know, he had like a little camper thing, and we crawled up in there and made some towns. And he was always. I mean, he was a nice guy. I mean, I didn't yeah. have no problems with him at all, but. Do you have any uh, comments or thoughts or followed the Vince McMahon recent accusations? Uh, do I believe it or do, have I followed it? Any, any of it. Well, if you, uh, if, I mean, I've, I mean, I've listened to the allegations and whatever. Do I believe it? Probably happened. I, you better believe I believe it. I don't have no <laughs> doubt it happened. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's just, I mean, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I'm not going to say, you know, whatever, but I, I believe it. Whatever the lady's saying probably was true. You could see Vince doing it is what you're saying. Oh, of course. <laughs> In a second. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, I hope they don't see that and call me to trial or something. <laughs> no, if, if anybody's going to get called from this show to go to, to trial, me and Rip will be way ahead of you before – before any of that happens, so you can have an opinion. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, we're not. That's just a, yeah, let me put it that way. That's on this show. My, that's just my opinion. Yeah, everything's alleged anyway. So everything's alleged. I just wondered what your your thoughts. And then there was one other one I had saw back here a little bit ago, and I can't find it. But somebody was asking something about um, Cornette had made a comment about you once being set back five years when you'd only been wrestling two years or something like that. Is oh, that, any- that was a thing with, uh, every time I see Cornette, he was my manager when I was Crusher Broomfield in Memphis, they put Cornette with me. So when I used to see Cornette in, uh, at signings or whatever, I said, Cornette would say, here is the man I set back five years in professional wrestling. <laughs> oh, so he would say it as a joke. Like he was real. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He put me back five years being my manager. <laughs> gotcha. So, but yeah, they, they they switched me to Crusher Broomfield. They wouldn't let me go as one man gang. I had to be Crusher Broomfield because the TVs overlapped back in those days. So Jerry Lawler and Dundee and him wanted to beat up on Crusher Broomfield. Yeah, I remember you telling us that you weren't a big fan of Memphis last time you were on here, but I don't remember you saying the Cornet was your manager. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I he was you might have, but I just didn't. Re- I didn't recall that. Yeah, I probably didn't. I was, you know, a lot of times I totally forget because it was such a short time. I was only there a couple of months, and we had a, you know, had a 
little problem, and then I just left, man. I didn't even give a notice or anything. I just left the territory. Just wasn't for me. I wasn't a Memphis type guy. Yep. yep. Anything on Skandar Akbar you'd like to share? Somebody was asking about uh, Skandar. He was, I mean, uh, he was one of the first guys I met in Mid South. He picked me up at the airport when uh, I flew in. He picked me up and. And uh, he, he's one of the managers that had, I mean, like, you know, serious heat. I mean, people wanted to kill that man every single night, you know. So, I mean, it was like every night we was fighting to get out of buildings. I mean, literally, we had to fight our way out of buildings. I'd never seen nothing, you know. I come from up there, you know, with ripping him guys. It wasn't – it was nothing like that. I mean, down in Mid-South, man, it was – Every night was just brutal. Man, them fans were so serious about it, you know, and Akbar was number one on the list, you know, and I had I, I happened to be in Devastation Incorporated. So if I if he's number one, I'm right behind him. So whatever <laughs> whatever's going on with him, I was right there with him. So now I remember you told us you got the uh, head tattoos as part of the, the story, I think. The storyline yeah, maybe was, that was Playboy Gary Hart though. What Somebody had asked a question when I had posted that you were coming on um, on our YouTube channel, and somebody wanted to know if, if you if you had any family members that had any reactions to your head tattoos or tried to talk you out of it or anything no, no, outside uh, of wrestling. I didn't, no, I, I didn't really have any family left, so yeah, you know, I was pretty much you know, except for being married, you know, I was the only family I had. But wife yeah, didn't care. Hard. Of course, Gary Hart would, you know, was telling me, oh, this would be great, man. I'll take you down, you know, in Dallas, take you down. He took me down to some alleyway somewhere. And <laughs> we went in and he said, get these tattoos, get one skull here, one there, and color this, color that. And we'll say, this is Carrie and this is Kevin and blah, blah, blah. And every time you see it, that's who you think about. You're going to get your, you know, that's your war, that's your war symbol and this and that. So, uh, you know, of course. I'm a youngster, and it's you know this is Playboy Gary Hart, so I figured, oh yeah, man, that's a good idea. So, <laughs> so yeah, we went. He took me downtown some alleyway, and I got these uh, little tattoos on the side of my head. And, <laughs> so, that's awesome. I'm not sure they're real little though, are they? They're well, not now. I got them redone. I had a lot of flames and stuff put yeah. out, and now people, you know, back in the day, they kept calling me. I, they'd mistake me for Bam Bam Bigelow. Because I had tribal little work. It looks like flames, but they call it tribal work. I don't know what it's called, but they had mistake me for Bam Bam Bigelow all the time. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not Bam Bam Bigelow. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with him. I like the guy, but that's not me. That's awesome. You got any more questions for Rip? Or Rip, you got any questions for Gang before we get going? I told him we'd keep it to about an hour. So we've been on two total. He's been on longer than an hour. So no, he's over. Busy. he's over yeah i'm over here in louisiana technology is amazing you guys are there wherever you're at i'm here in louisiana hanging out so man that's just amazing that you can do things like that yeah look how easy this was i know i know even though i had to hold my phone well but, you know it's okay it didn't it's not that bad we can we could we could make it better next time i told you i'd I'd, so, so hustler, you go out and do any signings anymore? You go anywhere? Or you just hang out in Seymour now? No, I've been living in Seymour since '98. Oh, okay. We're in Indianapolis area. You're in Indianapolis, okay? Yeah, yeah I'm on a, I'm on a. Let's see, I do a lot of those signings. Uh, I was at the one, I was the one in Charlotte last year. Then I always go to Bobby Fulton's, and I'll work for uh, her, Herb. Uh, Simmons. Yeah, Herb Simmons in uh, St. Louis or wh wherever it is around there. So uh, uh, I go, I go to I go to a lot of them. Sometimes oh. if it's if it's too far, I said, Nah, I ain't interested. You so know. you drive, or you just got to be within driving range, or? Well, I've had some fly me in, you know, but I, I usually want to drive because you, you're a prisoner without a car. Yeah, I'm I'm the same exact way. If I, if I go to signings, I have to. Uh -huh. As a driver, I don't care, you know, last two years ago or whatever, I, we drove all the way to Canada. Uh huh. Uh, you know, because I was doing the uh, first Royal Rumble uh, we did it 30 years ago, I guess, mm -hmm. and somewhere in Canada there. And 
they wanted me to come in for it. You know, they had me, Doug in, and whoever else was in it, you know. So, uh -huh. so I, I said, well, I'll do it. But, you know, you got to, you know, they have to rent the car, you know, and yeah. pay for my gas and stuff like that, which they're going to, you know, they're going to have to get a plane ticket. If they don't, I'm not going to mess around no airports. Yeah. I, uh, the older you get, the less hassle, the less hassles, you know. What yeah, I, mean? I got to have that vehicle, man. I don't I just, that's just me. Some guys can handle them airplanes, man. I just can't handle them at all anymore. I couldn't even handle them in WWF because, man, I was, I'd get off of them planes. I'd be almost crippled. It'd be so bad getting them little B seats, man. People would be crushing your knees, you know. You imagine me and Tugboat and Big Boss yeah. Man and uh, Earthquake and, Jeez. you know. I mean, we're yeah. all in the back, you know, and. All these every time we get on the plane every single day, the businessmen, you know, they'd all be looking like, please don't sit here, please don't sit yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine you guys walking in on a plane. That'd be know, wild. Man, it's, it's, <laughs> Jeez. Man, that was every single day we was going somewhere like that. So now I'm like, I don't even want to get near an airport. I just can't do it. Yeah. You know, so hey, check out do, this picture. I don't, do, I don't do too many signings anymore. You see that picture? Yeah. Convertible blondes. That's ICW right there. That's nice. You ever you ever talk with Gary or Rick? Any any have you talked to them recently? Yeah, or? I seen them at some conventions and stuff. They were there. Uh I think uh I think they were both in Charlotte last year. Okay. Um uh, and yeah. then but I'll they'll send me stuff on my phone. Every oh, okay. once in a while, Gary, Gary, he's always traveling somewhere. Is he? Yeah. I mean, out of the country and everything, just like vacation or whatever. He's like Vaughn Lila's. Lila's is on vacation every other week. It seems like tomorrow I head to Florida. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Vaughn, uh, I know you're running late. I mean, running you know, overtime, but oh I, no, we're good. Whatever now. No. I was curious. I mean, what, what got you interested in professional wrestling? How, why did you want to be a, a wrestler? Was it because of rip? Well, that and my, my dad. I, I mean, when I grew up, it was Channel 3 Wrestling, which was Memphis. And it was on Saturday morning. So that was Lawler, Dundee, Mantell, you know, the whole Memphis crew. And then we had like Channel 4 Wrestling, which was Dick the Bruiser out of like Indianapolis. So <clears throat> that, that whole gang. Um, so, yeah. And then I would see Rip. You were on with Bruiser every once in a while. It's mm -hmm. like the disco kid, I think. And No, I was Mark Shira. Then. Mark Shira. So it was uh -huh. when he still had the dark hair, short hair. So. Uh -huh. You know, when Rip would be on TV, that was just that was just wild. And at that time, he wasn't on very much because he was gone somewhere else. And then we got ICW. Um, so my dad always just watched it. Him and like I said earlier, him and my dad had that connection where they put on shows. I mean, you saw the pictures um, even. Let me see if I can find that birthday when uh, right here. I mean, this is a show right here uh, that I that I posted the other day. This picture here, I was. Five probably rip was 25 is 1978 was his picture so wow. always just always just grew up in it um dad liked it and watched it on tv and i always bothered rip when i was in high school uh about getting into wrestling he was we were at the same gym i was just a skinny little kid that played basketball and rip would say oh you got to go to college kid you got to get your you got to get your degree and then we'll talk so i did the college deal hey rip i want to get into wrestling oh you gotta you gotta get a job first and so I got a, like a teaching job. Hey, Rip, I want to, I've done everything you've told me to do. <laughs> and he said, meet me at the gym. And uh, we always argue where we went, but it was somewhere in Illinois. He said, pick me up and drive me to Illinois. And he wrestled against uh, the California kid, I think it was yep. called. And uh, and I was his manager. So he let me be his, his manager. Oh, wow. And I had this uh, pencil. Shoot, I still have it. It was it's all taped it's up. It's laying around here somewhere. I got it's this pencil. somewhere. It's all taped up as my gimmick that he gave me. And a, a little kid, it was in an elementary school, and a little kid stole it out of my pocket. Uh -huh. I was giving it to Rip. He would give it back. I would give it to him. Some little kid comes out of the front row and takes it from me. And then you can see on the tape, security guards go and take it from him and give it back to me so we can continue to use it. <laughs> so then one night we had a, a battle royal in Seymour that he brought a bunch of guys to the armory. And uh, he said, "You want to get in there tonight?" I'd never been in a ring before, and it was and I it was an OVW before contract, you know, came. And uh, I said, I, "I was scared shitless." I said, "Yeah." 
so he put me in the battle royal and they just beat the they beat the snot out of me and that was that was it that was the beginning well that's the way that's what's supposed to happen when you're a youngster you get in in battle royals you're gonna get beat up oh yeah they that's, killed me but the, you know they got a choppy every one of them's got to yeah. get that big chop in on you oh yeah you know, so if you don't leave the ring with that chest blistered, something's wrong. So, oh, it was. I have a picture of it somewhere. It was, it was not pretty. And his career just went on from there, huh? Yeah, actually, not quite yet. That was one night. And then, um, OVW, that's when WWE came in to OVW as a training center when Rip was the trainer. And I was teaching uh, high school, and Rip said, Hey, why don't you have a show at your school? Because you could buy a show as a fundraiser. So I said, okay, and, and then we worked it out where I was going to be in the Battle Royal then, and that was when, like, Cena and all those people were there. So he had it to where I was in the Battle Royal, but then they, like, threw powder in my face, so I had to leave. He didn't want me to last in the whole time with all these big monsters in there. And then I came back in the end and made the save, and they all eliminated each other while I was down, so I ended up winning in my hometown, <laughs> the Battle Royal, with Cena Great. and all these guys, you know, WWE guys now. But that was the beginning then. And then I started going down to Louisville from Muncie, about a three-hour drive to train every weekend with Nick Dinsmore, Eugene. And then I got in Rip's class like the next summer or whatever. So I continued teaching while I did it. And that, you know, that so was... after after the big battle royal, when you went to classes on uh, the next Monday or whenever it was, what did all the kids uh Hey man, I saw oh. you in the battle royal. Oh, they loved it. Oh, I was I was <laughs> over for about a week at least, and yeah, then he was the king of Muncie. Oh yeah, they yeah. <laughs> that we was did great. about three years. I wrestled Rip there. Rip's last match, I wrestled him in Muncie. Oh really? Yeah, put him out of action. I retired him. Yeah, he retired. Me. You put him out of action, man. That's well, he got hit right by there. a car like three days later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was still his last match, so I tell everybody that I put him out of wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> a real man it's been good talking to you man and once again congratulations on uh being on planet earth for 70 years that's amazing 70 this long years when i when i knew you back back in the day i was like 21 years old that's crazy that's yeah, wild i'm fixing to turn 64 in a couple of days so i mean that's that's crazy as all i mean it just amazes me I thought about that when I put that picture up the other day. I mean, that picture is 45 years old that I that I pulled up wow. from my mom's photo album 45 years ago. That's crazy. Man, it's good that you uh, was that you saved all those photos. You know, that's the one yeah. thing I kind of regret about. You know, during my time in the business, I didn't. You know, if I could have, you know, had a little camera or something, and you know, but you just didn't. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. That's the thing, you know. Yeah, I, I, you just couldn't go to guys and say, "Hey, man, let's get yeah. a picture together for uh -huh. you know down the road or something." You just, you just didn't happen. Uh, you know, I don't know. I feel bad. I wish I could have done it, you know, but you just couldn't do it. Yeah, you know, it's not like nowadays. You know, we all have these little phones, and you just walk up to somebody and say, "Hey, let's get a picture together," you know, but. No, nah, guys wouldn't do it back in those days. It was just I don't know, taboo. I don't know what or what the deal was. They just didn't want to do it. You know, I'd I would oppose with anybody. I didn't care. You know, but the you know, them old veterans back in the dressing room, they were kind of, you know, they were kind of rough on you. They didn't want to be bothered. So Yeah. It would have been cool to see. Yeah. I didn't I don't even think I have a picture of me and Rip or anything like that. We, I don't even think we took one together back in the day when I was I, I don't ICW. really I don't really remember taking pictures with anybody except like I got a picture with Bruno when he was working for Dick the Bruiser. And when I would go to the Sheik's place, I had some pictures with guys. But it, the the K Fape thing, they didn't want a baby face with a heel. Yeah, yeah. And in, in and in the heel character, always wanted to be in character in a picture, right? So it was, uh, and so, and it, it was a big deal. I went into some territories and and never took a picture because know, it, was, yeah. it was a big deal to, to take three pictures here, and then six months later, two pictures here. Then all of a sudden, you go to the drugstore, and four of them <laughs> came out. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. then you come out with the Polaroid thing. <clears throat> And then, uh, but now everybody's got, everybody's got a cell phone. You can take a video, you can do whatever, right? Yeah, 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 you're right. 
But it was. Hey, it would have been. It would have been great if we would have had this technology back in the day, though. I mean, <laughs> what what memories we could have kept, right? Yeah. Rip says yeah, he would have been in trouble. Really if you nice. <laughs> but oh. even when after I, even when I was a, uh, I guess quote a veteran, it's been around a while. You know, I still felt when I went in dress rooms, I feel I still felt like I was a youngster that I didn't. You know what I mean? I, I kind of yep. just. Yeah, I didn't like. You know. I had a lot more experience than a lot of the guys in there, but I, but I felt, and you know myself, when I went into these dress rooms, I still felt like I was kind of just ain't right. You know, I shouldn't even be in the dress room with certain guys because they're like like way at the top, way. You know, I don't even understand how I put that, but you know, I know you rip. You probably don't. You probably didn't think that way, but. You know, every dress room I ever went in, that's the way I always thought, man. I'm, man, I'm sitting on the, you know, I'm sitting on this bench with Andre the Giant, or I'm, you know, that's 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 Nature Boy Ric Flair across the dress room. That's incredible, you know. That's the way it was just amazing to me. I, I would have been too embarrassed. I'm thinking, I'm just this fucking piece of shit guy from Seymour, Indiana, and this guy's been all over the world. I seen him in fucking magazines. If he speaks, I'll say, oh, hi, hello. And that's yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. I, was the, I, I looked at I looked at everybody that was in before me as major stars, no matter oh, what. Exactly, exactly. And I, I could be in the match with them. I may be in right. the tag team match as a partner or working against somebody like that, like Andre or whatever. And I still felt that way, you know. I still felt like, man, this ain't this just ain't right, man. You know, just be uh -huh. quiet, find my little corner and and don't yep. bother anybody. I, I told you the last time you were on here, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. I mean, you were a, you were, yourself was a star as well. I know you feel that way in the locker room when you're with people like that, but man, you were, you were a big deal. Eh, I don't know about a big deal. I was well, just one of the, you I was just one of the, like, I was just one of the thousands of wrestlers that passed yeah. through and, and, you know, now it's all behind me. It's history and my life, you know, I survived over all these years. And, you know, it's just the way I look at it. I don't look at it as being any, you know, I'm glad what I did. I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not happy of what I did or, you know, things that happened in my career, but I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't, if you walked in my living room, you wouldn't see one item that shows that I was a wrestler, no picture no uh action figure you know like some guys you see their videos and they got like walls of yeah. pictures and this and that i'm like i don't i don't have the first one i just i just yeah, don't you, look at it that way you have the uh kennels or whatever everybody was asking about those the last time yeah, we put out yeah, videos so everybody wanted to know about animal. those we got we got four dogs <laughs> and we got five six seven eight nine cats so oh. Jeez, yeah, rescues every one of them. We big big on rescues, you know. So that's good. Good for you, you know. And uh, you know, with one one uh pass away from old age or whatever, and we always end up with another one. <laughs> you know, somebody will come up to us and say, "Hey, I found this cat or this dog," and we always take it in. I mean, we got the space. It's not like we don't have the space to do it, but. It's a, uh, you know, I have to get up in the morning. I'm up around 6.15 or so. And, you know, that's, that's pe people would be like, this is a one-man gang. What's he doing in there dipping out the cat box? And, <laughs> you know, yeah, but, I, you know, you do it where you got animals, you got things you have to do, you know, that's my life. Yeah. You know, I don't do nothing special, man. My day is pretty much spent right here at the house unless I got a doctor's appointment or something or other than that. I, you know, I don't really go out anywhere. Uh, I'm just not a, that type of person. I, I just don't like to go out. I'm not good in crowds of people. And that's, I know that sounds crazy after wrestling in front of thousands and thousands of people, but when you're in the ring, you, you're, you're not out with the people, you know, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? I mean, I yeah. had that safety net of being in the ring, in the ring. I felt comfortable. Like, you know, this is, this is right, but if you put me in a party or a gathering or something, I'm totally like a wallflower standing off to the side. You know, I'm like, I don't know what to say to anybody. You know, that do they know? I, you know, I can't walk up to these people and say, "Hey, man, you 
Can you tell me anything about a body slam? You know, can you ever, uh, you know, something, you know what I'm saying? All you can't, can't just go into a keen mode and start dancing? Yeah. All I can talk about is wrestling, basically. That's that's my knowledge base is wrestling. I don't know anything else. That's it. You know, I know that sounds strange, but, uh, you know. Uh, no, Rip's told me that about himself before. <laughs> you know, I'm totally just you know, one like. Thing. That's why I don't go out places, you know. I just stay here at the house, you know. And like I say, you you sent me the little thing about, uh, you know, wishing Rip a happy birthday, and I told you, man, I'd love to, man. Rip's a Rip's a A plus number one guy, you know. No matter how curmudgeon he seems to put on right there, but uh, you know, he's a he's a <laughs> good dude, man. Always has been. You That's know, good. You can't, and you can't, you know, even though. He, uh, he may not have had a huge, you know, career overall, but actual in-ring work, he's probably one of the best, you know, that came around because he would go out there and do whatever it took to get that match over, you know, taking bumps, doing whatever. Then he would lose by whatever means, and he was always the one that would jump up, you know. Hey, man, he boy, you all <laughs> crazy. It'd be, you know, and that, that's just – he was always the best, man. You you just can't – it's just hard to explain. If you're not a wrestler, you don't know how good he was, you know. Or if you hadn't been in the ring with him, just like that previous video, you don't know how good Rip really was in the prime of his day. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he had a great long career for sure. People just didn't see him on, like, WWF TV much. but Or win a lot of matches. We do some Rip Rogers reviews, and it seems like he loses – just seems just to come up short, you know, almost, almost won well, a couple of them, but that was basically all of us. I mean, I was the same way with my career. Basically, if you look through the records, if there's records kept basically every night I was, you know, unless you saw me on TV, but house shows pretty much every night I was losing, you know, one way or the other, I was losing. So that's just, yeah. you know, I was professional wrestling. I didn't, yeah. They talk about guys being job guys or this or that. Well, heck, that's what I was. I, I didn't care. I, you know, I was just happy to get in the ring. I just wanted to do what I needed to do. And it was just so much fun to get out there, you know, and just do it. Right. And I, it's just hard to explain if you, I don't know, because I grew up wanting to do that. I didn't have any aspirations of being a baseball star or football star or fireman or whatever my my dream was to be a professional wrestler you know i know i know that sounds a little crazy you know oh, no. and I, it just happened that the stars aligned correctly like we talked about being at the right place at the right times people helping you out at certain times in your career putting good words in for you to get you places and things you know it always seemed to work out for me in that in that aspect thanks to you know, other talents and guys or whatever, you know, because if it had been on my own, I probably would have never made it. But just, you know, thanks to people, you know, helping you out along the way. That's that's basically what it was for me, you know. Yeah. So it looks like Rip's getting a little drowsy over there. You know? <laughs> no, I'm, just, years old, I'm just sitting so here he listening. Take, he he probably has to his, pee. No, I don't have to pee. <laughs> I'm well, if he listening. has to pee, he's got to get up and go. I know you got a bathroom around there. <laughs> oh, the bathroom's right over there. It just takes me a couple minutes to get up. I, me trying to sit down in a chair or get up is quite the adventure. <laughs> but anyway, Rip, man, I just want to tell you, man, congratulations. I hope I'm uh, around for, you know, your 80th one. Yeah, let's try 71 first. Yeah, we'll try 71 <laughs> first. Yeah. yeah. But for seventy, man, you got a you got a sharp mind. You still got it all together. I tell you that. Oh no, that's Vaughn. I'll I'll start talking and I'll say, what was I talking about? I won't yeah, have a clue. We all do. Have that. no do idea. That. All of a sudden, I'll just go blank. Or it's I mean, something Vaughn, I told him. a young man. I'm sure he does that himself. So fifty, baby. Oh, you're fifty. Wow, you look great. Yeah, fifty. I, I, you know. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. No, seriously, y'all. You guys take care of yourself. That's for sure. Yep. You know, I show I show is on you. But uh, keep up the good work, man. You've hey, been we're gonna some. You've been having some fabulous guests, uh, you know. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, we've been on a pretty good, pretty good run. Yeah, been going let's well. Get, let's get them viewers, get them subscriptions up, and uh, you know, let's get some more in here to get watching you guys, so you can make you some 
YouTube money. There you go. That's it, baby. <laughs> Look at the gang putting us over here, giving us a plug, giving us a shout out, giving us a promote. Hey, we're going to end this thing with a head bob. So we got a, we got a band, a group, I guess you'd call them, a, a musical group called Starcade that does this music. I was in one of their videos. So if we can end it with a uh, maybe a, a little head bob, maybe an Akeem <laughs> head bob. Well, we're going to have you back on, though, sometime. Now that you can figure out technology, we'll get those earbuds. We'll do a run through <laughs> sometime down the road because I know you love talking wrestling. So we're going to get you back on here another time to uh, to join us. But And I really appreciate it. And happy birthday. Happy 64th birthday on Monday. Glad you made it in. Thanks for everything. And now we got... Look at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right change on, the, baby. Right name, on. Change the name to a team right now. Yeah. yeah right so swole that I can't get the shit closed. So I money fold and rubber All right, band. man. I'm out of here if I can figure out how to do it. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks really for being on, gang. All right, Ripper. You take care, man. Love Live you, the brother. dream. Have a good one, baby. You too, man. See you. Thank you. All right. That's it. Thanks for all the people out there today. Thanks for the super chats. Thanks for all the uh, viewers. Make sure you like this. Make sure you share this. Subscribe. Do all that good stuff. Happy birthday to Rip. Happy anniversary to the show. Don't get no better than this today, Rip. I had a good time. Well, we're not off yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's waiting for a big, like, big finish from you. Like, yeah, awesome. No, Rip's out of today. I think he's on drugs. I think he's already on some of those Ben Hameen drugs. Maybe he sent them uh, telepathically to Rip or something like that. But uh, everybody have a good weekend. And uh, join us next Friday at our concrete time right here at 11 a.m. Eastern.